surface, I look fine. My brain feels heavy, my traumatized mind. And I'm so tired, I can't feel my eyes. Whoa, oh, whoa, oh. I'm petty, but I know how to lie. I feel feelings that I can't describe. I'm not breathing, but I'm still alive. Whoa, oh, whoa, oh. But I think I'll be alright. Cause I'm not giving up, I'm not giving up yet. I feel that it's my time. So I'm gonna give it everything. I wait around for things to change, but change has not come fast. I'm asking all the questions, but then I question them. Like, what's the point of living, existing when you can't see your God in flesh? I'm looking for the answers, they say to pray instead. I think I'll find them one day, but with a helping hand. I know that it's not easy, but I believe I will. Yeah, I'll get over all my fears and really conquer everything. I think I'll be alright, cause I'm not giving up, I'm not giving up yet. I feel that it's my time, so I'ma give it everything. I'ma give it everything I got. So I'ma give it everything. I'ma give it everything I got. I'ma give it everything. I'ma give it everything I
Welcome to LXC. Down in the rift again, where champions ascend. Ward in lead lights the night. Over in the ultimate out without using much. Meanwhile, Fury going for the 1v1, except he's not aware. Lilia is here, still has Sleepy. They do decide to use it. Get that will. Oh, wait, the classic crit. Looks like Aurora is in a bit of trouble here. Suddenly, in a 1v1 that she did not want to be in. It looks like Fury is able to outplay that, and that even delays Sachi from taking the Herald. And I have to kind of break this down in little, little parts because there's so much happening right now and it happened across the map. So we not under much pressure at all other than Zombie Oh no, no, that's a match at this point up Ah, you just look at the standings once again. Yeah, Dropping Point is their one loss. I believe they might have had one more loss against Ego Nog, which is very surprising given the current standing, so not many people pressure them. NLE showed that it can be done. And NLE are making a name of like a very strong condition. I can't see them not making playoffs at this point. Now it's just a question. Of D level one G's, but I feel like that's just a waste of the word. Um, yeah, but I mean, it's, it's 46 seconds into the game. Ezreal could say if he really wanted to and just heal up. <laughs> That's a that's a manifold proc though, I'm pretty certain. It is, it's a manifold proc. My mid laner always yells out every time he hits a manifold proc, so I mean it's it's my mana. And welcome to LXC Season 2 Summer Split. We are in the penultimate games of Warden before playoffs. So we've got this week and next week. And I can tell you that we have our Warden teams that are going into playoffs. We just don't know exactly where they're going to be in the standings. However, for today, we're going to be watching NLE Legionnaires versus Ego Nog. And Ego Nog gets to have a say in that, although unfortunately they will not be joining us for playoffs. Uh, I'm here today as Scarlet Cuticast with Badger. Hello, thank you for joining us. What is up, everybody? Uh, thank you, Scarlett, for the introduction. Um, I'm excited to be here. Uh, I got got brought on a little late, but I'm super excited. I know a little bit about both these teams, uh, especially Ego Nog. Got to rep New Origins, um, and then unfortunately they don't make playoffs. But I think um, honestly, the team that doesn't have anything to lose is going to go out there and just kind of just show everybody who's boss is how I see it. Right? You think about all the teams like they get eliminated, and then they're just like, you know, we're just going to like mess around with some stuff. And I think that's what's going to happen tonight for sure. So. Yeah, I definitely excited for that, and also excited to see what um, NLE show before playoffs. Since now they're still playing for something, you know, uh, mm -hmm. it might not be as serious as trying to get in, but you still want to be at the highest seed possible for sure. Obviously, like we might be getting the draft pretty quickly mm -hmm. um, because I already see the links in chat. This is really refreshing and nice that Orden is on time and stuff. <laughs> hey, they're speedy and efficient over here. Top, top of the league, right. top, of the top of the speed charts is all I like to say. They're doing a great job. Um, yeah, but now, also, I don't have the exact roster that teams are playing yet, so we'll update with you guys with that. So we'll probably keep it away from specifics about players until we actually get into draft. Mm -hmm. But uh, one thing, how are you feeling about the new patch notes? Oh, go ahead. Oh, are the patch notes live today? I thought that was next week that they're they're dropping. No, no, it's just last week. But you know, oh, we might as well talk about something that affects today. That's true. That is true. Um, I'm thinking from last week. I mean, the biggest thing for me that I always am shouting out for is the the control mage changes that showed up, uh, mm -hmm. where Oriana, Azir, and Syndra are now in the meta. Like my three favorite champions, obviously, as a mid laner. Mm -hmm. um, as much as I loved playing Zeri, Smolder, and Ezreal every game, I'm I'm good to go back to the ball lady. I mean, she's my favorite. Um, and I'm hoping to see that in some of these games. I know those those three aren't as popular, as, but maybe when we get closer to these Diamond Leagues, we're going to be seeing them show up. So I'm excited to see it. Um, that's what I'm looking out for. 
Yeah, and it looks like we do have the rosters mostly finished. I know we specifically were wondering if a certain Jazz Goblin was going to join us. So um, we will get confirmation on that. Insider information has told me this person will emerge. Um, who's to <laughs> say, really? Um, if not, we could just get a surprise mid laner on the side of Ego Nog, and maybe they are the wild card that the team needs. Um, but one thing I also, when looking over these stats, wanted to shout out is the fact that over on the side of NLE, um, Emrys is currently a master ranked um, jungler, and mm -hmm. on the side of Ego Nog, that is my he is a he was a jungle main, but that is currently my Crusader support uh, filling in. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And okay, and while I love so. Dira, if he if he pops off in this series, um, he is getting nothing but praise from me. Um, and I yeah, think he's gonna he will not be able to live this down for the rest of his life, to be honest. Probably switch him from your Crusader support to Crusader jungle. I'm well, thing. I do, but but my jungle is still my boy. They're both my boys, you know. I can't I can't have them just be switching around like that, obviously. Uh, <laughs> but we'll have to see. We'll see. Um, I think that's good. I mean, we're looking at this roster here. You see two Masters players, Diamond Two, a Diamond One. Like this is the top of the list, and Eo Nog, they um they. I, I love them to death, but they're they're a ragtag group of, of misfits in this match for sure. Well, that's the best time to show up whenever the season's almost over. Mm -hmm. Everyone's counted you out. They're looking at your ranks and saying, "Why is a Crusader support in the jungle role?" Sometimes people underestimate you, and you get to get one out and end it on a victory for your season. I mean, hey, I in my matches yesterday, I got solo killed twice by the mid laner who was a whole tier below me. So, you mm -hmm. know, maybe rank doesn't actually matter. Based. And <laughs> I think it's just, it's just how you're playing on the day. And maybe Dira, Valka, Artemis, they're going to just show up and they're going to just absolutely um, let NLE know who's boss. I think that is a possibility here today. But I well, say... there's one thing that they are. <laughs> maybe they're not the highest ranked players. They're also not the most on time players. I like how I said that they had the draft ready and stuff. Mm -hmm. But we're still waiting on some players. So that was a bit early, I guess. So we'll yeah. be talking for a little bit longer. Sorry, <laughs> that's good. I can I can yap all day. That's what I think. That's what we're that's what the big bucks are for, right? That's what we're here for. Um, but I'm thinking like, I know we were talking about the patch. I'm still wondering um what these teams are prioritizing. What we're thinking are the strongest champions on the patch. Um, so I've seen champions like Aurora. Um, I think Aurora is pick ban. I know a lot of people say they have counter picks into it. I don't believe him. I think the champion is still bonkers, and I think that the nerfs that are coming next patch are going to be very big. Um, I've also seen Senna uh, be popping up a lot. That Enchanter yes. build is nasty. And it's weird because you have to rethink how you consider Senna in a draft. Because before, you were like, well, now they're going to pick some kind of Tom Kent or something. That's just not the case anymore. Mm -hmm. Now, I always view it as like, a, it's basically, you think of it kind of like in the Lulu, the Yumi situation where you just want mm. something, you want a hyperscaler, you want that position like the, we played it with Cog, or you could play it potentially with the Jinx, the, um, these just hyperscaling AD carries that are just going to be able to really benefit from that heal. Because honestly, that AoE heal, like I've seen it do 1k and 1q cast, it's absolutely bonkers. And I'm kind of happy it's getting nerfed next week, but it's here this week, so we'll have to see if it gets here. Nerfed. I think yeah. the players are actually here, and it will not be Jazz Goblin today. Unfortunately, maybe next week. So uh, that is yeah. actually Nera Hate. Um, what I know about this player is that is actually my Crusader coach. So it is going to be so fun to watch this guy play mid lane. Um, nice. Okay, I was going to ask for a pronunciation guy, but I guess you would know. Nera Hate? <laughs> yeah. You could totally mess me up, definitely, and make fun of him at the same time. But no, me no worries. No worries. Honestly, any way you pronounced it, I probably would have been like, that probably is fine. That probably works. Um, it's fine. <laughs> exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, the it, interesting about having a coach for a lower level team on your team is like, you know, they bring a lot of the macro that they can't really show off in solo queue. So sometimes their solo queue rank is a little deflated compared to what they bring to the team. Mm -hmm. So it will be interesting to see how the macro changes for Egonog uh, with this coach on their team. Mm -hmm. I So while this might not be the initial roster for Egonog, this is a team that I am just very, very excited to watch uh, because I know at least four out of these five people I've been, I've been in calls with, I've talked to. Um, so I think if at the end, if they pop off, I get to go in and be like hyping them up. But if they, uh, if they lose this match, I get to, I get to kind of mess with them a little bit and flame them, but we'll see. 
We'll have to see how it goes. Uh, I think maybe they'll maybe they'll perform today. I'm I'm hoping for the best, right? I want a good games. I'm three game series, right? Uh, yeah, uh, it's definitely a possibility. And if it happens that way, then we will get to know more about what's happening on the other match of the night, which is RAR versus Contingent Orange. They had to reschedule. <sighs> Looking at the time, it's going to be forty five minutes behind. So you know, even if it goes to three games, we might not know exactly what's happening. But that could infer more about the standings. Uh, based on how this series go and that series goes, if this ends up being a three game series, and we're into draft. My favorite part of the game right now. We're gonna see what these teams have been preparing. Um, I will say on the side of NLE, I bet you they probably are a little. They probably might not know. Um, but I will say that is a good start banning that Aurora champion. Like I said, it's bonkers. <laughs> Where I get out of here. <laughs> mm -hmm. Wonder if Senna will also see the ban list. I've been seeing a lot in my solo key games, but maybe they just are okay with an enchanter. <laughs> you know that uh might struggle a little bit to scale in a competitive game mm -hmm. i mean right now they're banning out these uh i was gonna say with wukong and zeri these are traditional picks that oftentimes they have that strength of roll their ad carry for zeri wukong in the jungle but they also have the flex options as well zeri mid wukong top um, but then for the rest of the bands, we're seeing Ezreal, more AD mids potentially, especially from Narahate, who's originally primarily an AD carry player. I think those are very strong bands to have, especially when yeah. he's probably going to be looking to take those. At the same time, mid lane is kind of open right now. I know you said the control mages are back, but I mean, you can't necessarily bring any AD carry there. You know, I think the days of Caitlyn mid are maybe over, but... Oh, Caitlyn mid, I don't know see. about that, but... <laughs> Speaking Looking of now which, at the... an AD carry blind, potentially? I am always a big proponent of AD carry blind. I think a lot of the time it is the easiest role to get away with picking early. And I think Jin is one of those staple like uh, AD carries on the patch. Him, MF, Ash are some of your key uh, blinds right now. Um, I think Jin is the strongest, so I think it's a really solid opener for NLE. Yeah, and I'm seeing some chirping in the match chat that you guys might be unaware of. Two players from NLE are complaining about the bans already. <laughs> so it looks like Ego Nog did their homework correctly. Or uh, Legionnaires just wants them to think that. You never know about the mind games, but <laughs> they mm -hmm. have said that they are upset that Wukong and Anivia are banned. Hey, if if a team is complaining about the bans that they then that means you did something right. Right, yeah, exactly. so I think that's a good thing for Migo Nog. Props to them. Also, like we're seeing misfortune on the other side. Like I said, Jin misfortune. Two really, really strong eighty carries right now. Um, we're gonna potentially see that. I would assume that support, but we're looking at actually the Amumu coming out here, which is technically yeah. a support flex. I have seen a lot of jungle second picks and picking the support a lot later because of how uh, different the support meta is right now and how flex it is. You know, the counter picks matter almost more than the eight carries in a lot of ways. I do. So I jungle. Just kind of nice. Mm -hmm. I completely agree. Um, I've seen even in like Sentinel, I've seen a lot of this uh, misfortune Amumu together. Even if the Amumu is in the jungle, um, I think there is a lot of threat that it come that shows up with this Amumu being a potential support. Um, because misfortune Amumu is the most common uh, duo I've seen with that Amumu support. Uh, but Silas coming out from the other side, uh, he's saying, "I want that. I want that big Amumu, R, and it's gonna be mine." And you guys are all yeah. Good. There's always two champions that maybe just think can we fit silas in here it's a moo moo and it's slain so mm -hmm. moo comes out you put the mf there that's a lot of attractive ults already it's not like ego nog can take away the r's they're not going to pick three bad r's for their comp mm -mm. so just pick the silas now it's a little awkward blind but certainly good into the enemy comp right now yeah i do think a silas blind does open up the opportunity for an early mid counter pick i usually see silas priority showing up as that later pick usually maybe that r5 that b5 um but this early pick i mean when you see an amumu it is good and we're ending up seeing a garen in response to the atrox from nle which i think is actually not a very bad matchup and it's one of valka's favorite champs if the silas is mid lane it'd be very funny to see jungle support go last pick for this draft, I mean, it's just very rare to see that it happens, of course, but seeing the solo lanes potentially, that Silas is a flex, technically. Um, although with the AP nerf, I think his jungle is a little bit harder. Mm -hmm. uh, but seeing these uh, champ solo lanes pick first is very interesting. Now, you can safely ban, ban the supports. It's not easy to see the Silas going support, so uh, mm -hmm. that is what Eagle will target for now. Yeah, and that Seraphine right now, I think that champion, maybe it isn't a sleeper, but I think that champion is so ridiculously strong right now. 
I've seen it first picked. I've seen it just immediately taken away. Um, I think it fits with so many different AD carries. I've seen it picked with the Lucian. I've seen it picked with the Jinx. Um, I think just the sh healing and shielding it gives, as well as the R, is so helpful for your team that I just really think it is a fantastic ban. And now we're seeing a Yasuo on the side of NLE, which is very surprising, but... Yeah, we'll very interesting ban because... Yes, Yasuo would be fine with the Amumu R and the MFR, but if you pick Yasuo, now you have to pick a jungle that's AP and put Amumu bot lane, or you're just kind of hoping they don't build armor. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but at the same time, if you're scared of it, you're scared of it. You're scared of Yasuo. And <laughs> it looks like Nayate <laughs> already complaining about the Yasuo ban. So oh, I guess both goodness. teams did their homework well. Apparently, I'm surprised that uh, Narahate was actually a player i've only i've only really seen him play the easy um 80 carries but i mean i guess that's what got him to master in the first place so we'll see or we'll he's see. doing the next level he's doing the next mm -hmm. level and saying oh no my yasuo how could you never played it before in a it could be a mind game who's to say really but um now we're gonna see a uh, recon ban also coming out from the side of ego nog i think it pairs well with the Jin, and it also it is another person that's going to be going in with the silas and the atrox going to be able to dogpile potentially on this misfortune shut her down uh, but then we're seeing an A-Soul ban as the last ban here, which I'm honestly surprised about. Well, I mean, they're showing their soul lanes. If they pick a slow jungle, they could be scared of an A-Soul pick that could maybe what the Storm of Silas if an move comes. So I don't hate it if you're trying to pick a pretty slow-paced jungle here. But let's see what Egonog Bind picks. You have to imagine it's the support unless the Amumu flex. And it a is. Braum coming out. Okay. I think Braum. Yeah, Braum's... Is... Oh, I apologize. I think Braum has very good value with the misfortune as well. It also can shut down potentially the uh, the Gen R with the curtain call. Um, but I do think honestly picking Braum this early does kind of hurt Ego Nog's draft a little bit by getting rid of the flex options for that Amumu. Um, but we'll really have to see how the rest of it ends up panning out. Oh goodness, that is quite the comp for team fights if the Nico locked in, which it is. Uh, and then we're going to have to see what support potentially they pull it with. I mean, again, some of these champions can go in other roles, but I think they're just going to go what they usually go. And what support would you even begin to take with this? I, I mean, honestly, there's, I think there's the option here for Nico to actually be their support. Mm -hmm. um, I think Nico's actually her primary role right now is actually in the support category, uh, which is very. And yeah, we're actually seeing the Corky come out here. So it does look like it's going to be a. I would guess Nico support. Um... Yeah, Nico seems the most likely out of these five champions. And mm -hmm. then that would mean that it is, in fact, a Silas jungle. Which is very interesting. Um, I think there is the opportunity to punish that champion in the jungle. Um, I also think when you have Silas and... Mm, well, I'm thinking Corky paired with the Silas now. It's not You're not as likely to go with that um, the Merc Tread Rush. But we're now actually seeing Velkaz come out as a counter to this Corky. Yeah, it makes sense why the ASOL ban came out before, because if you show these five ASOLs a lot more attractive. But Velkaz is still available. He's kind of like ASOL mm -hmm. in a way. I mean, I haven't seen him that much, and I've seen ASOL a heck of a lot more. But, you know, they do similar things other than the massive scaling late game stuff that ASOL is known for. But, you know, in lane, it's very similar. So I do appreciate picking that into Corky. You ban the ASOL, and I'll just pick his not so distant cousin actually very distant cousin you know i remember when i first started out the game i was thinking asol and velkaz were super super similar to one another right they were just these like long range like the big like scary uh mid laners and now as i've played for eight plus years i still think in a lot of ways they are kind of similar um Push but in lane. the mm -hmm. but in the grand scheme of things i do kind of like the way that ego nog chose to go about this draft um i think misfortune and velkaz both of them using their r's on a specific target that target is dead in seconds right mm -hmm. and you have so much ability to if you are able to be in a good position uh before a fight starts around potentially the Drake, grubs herald you can burst someone very very fast with ego nog's comp yeah and we'll get confirmation on legionnaire's champion select uh pretty sure it is a silas jungle nico support because Silas support is just not real anymore, especially whenever we never knew if that Amun was support, and it turns out he's not. And the Silas has been locked in for Emery's in the jungle role. Mm -hmm. So it will be uh, Jen Nico bot lane. I think Jen Nico has a lot of threat. Um, I think potentially this Nico, a lot of the times you have to play the game of can you count, right? 
Um, I've had so many games, even in solo queue, as well as even scrims, where you're just able to disguise yourself as a minion, disguise yourself as something in the map, and just run around. And if your laners are not counting and being like, hey, why are there four casters walking towards me? You are going to immediately be blown up by an eco popping out and using everything on you. So I think Ego Nog is probably aware of this, but I think it is something that we should be looking out for as well. I think it's very fun to watch out for. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And with that, we know where all Tain Champions are going, and we are now just waiting for the players to get started. So we'll have a quick break, and then we'll be into game one of Ego Nog versus Legionnaires. See you guys in a bit.
welcome to game one of NLE versus Ego Nog. And we've got a five one on the top side of the map, but you can see five people grouped up in one of them switching between champions really quickly. I don't know exactly how that's going to work, but mm -hmm. uh, this is quite the interesting cheese that Valka has to face right now. I do think the, that's part of the benefit of the Nico, right? Is you have the opportunity to go for a little bit of a stinky cheese, and uh, they're looking to move in for this uh, potential five point invade, but it looks like Valka was able to spot it out. Or maybe. Oh, that is not a person who's <laughs> spotted it out. You don't want to face check that flashes, but there's nowhere out after that. So it's going to be first blood and it's going to go to Fury, which is an absolute disaster because now Valka has no flash and is against a laner with a kill. I mean, Silas has just the free run to play around the bot side of the map because Fury is well on his way to winning that lane candidly. You know, that might be one of the worst that, that might not be a great start i'm gonna be honest i i said i thought maybe there's a chance that he spotted it but uh walking face checking that bush with five people in it you that is not what you want to see also having to burn the flash as well is just absolutely devastating for valka oh i think emery's is not done with that lane yet either just wanting to punish it more without the flash because i don't think this is a level three gank now luckily ego knock has a word on the red buff so they might be able to see that pathing but mm -hmm. valka has not seen the last of the enemy team no, and about two, two to three minutes, we are probably going to be seeing that Silas come up and say hi to the, the King of Demacia, but uh, we'll have to see. Um, but looking now at how these lanes are panning out, I think there is a lot of strength um, from the lanes of Ego Nog um, individually. I think Velkaz is going to be able to outrange this uh, Quirky early, as well as Misfortune is going to be able to apply some pressure with the Braum. Um, but we're going to really have to see how it ends up panning out here. Yeah, Valka not caring about the level 2 gap if you're going to get the XP immediately back anyways. But down here, Kane mm -hmm. has not found that level 2 XP. And also, Silas is here, but the Sil bot lane should be well aware of it. Mm -hmm. Silas is moving into a really aggressive position here, um, but it doesn't look completely Wait, like they... And we actually see a flash. Is out. <laughs> yeah, pretty close. Now, they are trading pretty aggressively with Silas right here. I think Emery's does get this gank off pretty well. Bromstun is nice, so they actually just get a kill. I think Kane is in a lot of trouble too. Has to flash out, is stunned, and will die as well. The cannon is still hitting on to Bongo, so he will go down as well, and it's just a complete disaster for Legionnaires. Meanwhile, uh, top lane, they tr uh, got another kill as well, so suddenly the map went completely Legionnaires favored to Ego Nog favored, and it's not even close because of how much aggressively ahead uh, everywhere is going to be. I mean, it looks like Dira did come up for that gank to make that happen, but wow. There was just, I, there's so much going on. We see that actually um, Narahate in the mid lane ends up dying as well. We just see I mean, seven kills span. Oh my goodness. Seven kills happen in the span of about 30 seconds there. That is absolutely insane. Um, but even like looking primarily at that bot play, I completely expected that to go to the way of NLE looking at the double man route from the Nico, but Ruffian was able to clutch it up and now has three kills and a big French sword on his belt. Like he is in a good spot here. This is what I always found whenever playing Silas Jungle. These early cheese ganks are very powerful, but you're also going to be very unhealthy whenever you come in. So you absolutely have to have everything going in your favor or else the Braum stun is just going to ruin your day. Uh -huh. Absolutely here. And we're actually seeing that uh, that potential uh, benefit of playing Silas Jungle. He's bought the Dark Seal, a great item if you're if you're playing well, uh, but one of the worst items in the game if you're not playing well. But looking now, we see a... Oh, and we might see... This gank attempt is pretty good. Narahede does not have anything up. Use the flash earlier. They don't quite have the ability to get him under tower, though. And Amumu is in the area. Now we're seeing trade up on top lane here, and we're just seeing the fact that Aatrox is getting so much value out of the fact that Valka doesn't have any of his sums right now. Um, I guess the late players came here today to trade and to fight, because no one is just sitting back and farming. I guess maybe Narhate is trying, but they are not letting him. Mm -hmm. This has been nothing but scrappy to start this game, and honestly, um, I'm, super I'm very happy to see it, right? And we're seeing now a massive wave show up in top lane, but... With no jungler in sight, it looks like Valka's going to be safe this time. But... Jungler is actually mid lane trying to make a dive happen, but Valka has enough CC to be okay. I think he was... Oh, wait, Emery's has no minions? I think he's just dead. I think there uh... must have been a miscommunication there on just the, the size of the wave, because it just looks like he very, very much overextended there, and luckily Narahate was able to use geometry and just be able to pick up that kill there, but that is very surprising coming I mean, out from Narahate is a little bit of trouble, still okay. 
But because they went aggressive on that mid lane and because jungle died, it looks like Deer is just willing to pick up the dragon right now and there's nothing anyone can do about it. It looks like, yeah, I mean, your silence jungle is not coming over here. So you can throw a W from a Jin, but I'm pretty sure that dragon is going over to Ego Nog, which is aggressively early, especially given how the mid lane's gone. Mm -hmm. Looking at how that mid lane is going right now, this Velkos has gotten so much pressure put into him that he is unfortunately losing a lot. He doesn't have TP. He's having to roam down bot now. Thankfully, Ruffian and Artemis are able to pick up some of the CS mid that would have been completely lost. That's sitting at about like maybe two, two and a half waves. So they're able to get that gold. And honestly, they look like they're able to salvage this plane. Really, honestly, a good showing from Ego Nog looking at into the start of this game. Yeah, they took their bot lane aggressive uh, ability because, you know, Ruffian's 3-0 right now. <laughs> Turn it into a dragon, into making sure mid was covered, and letting Narihate have the tempo advantage of bot lane, because now Bongo and Kane have to leave, and that gives him plenty of free time with that wave bot lane. Now we're seeing the Silas spotted out. Uh, Valka's like, I'm not having any of it. But we're seeing the other jungler spot out, out Dira. Um, there right, is but the dual lane's still up here. So it looks like Nico and Braum are looking... I mean, there is the opportunity here for these first set of grubs to be contested, um, but I think both teams are looking to potentially be in a spot to fight this, as we see... Yeah, Ego Silas is pretty in. committed. Gets one at least for her, the trouble, but I don't know if he can get out. Actually decides to go in. It's a level 4 Silas. Not living through anything, especially with four members of Ego Nog there. So you get one grub, but you lost the dragon, and now you lose the other two. I just think this is not what we're wanting to see from a Silas jungle, right? We're needing to be seeing the Silas get ahead be able to lead, take that lead and we're seeing now this silas is unfortunately 03 with that no stack dark seal wait i think fury okay fury just holds out so it's okay i always get confused about when to interrupt with top lane fights because sometimes they just dissipate like that <laughs> but aggressively trading is fine you know bait the jungler to waste some time uh some time definitely was a little scary for my eyes but <laughs> i'm not used to playing atrox we can just ult and walk away mm -hmm. both they're kind of just trying to feel each other out i would honestly assume there, the Garen does have a lot of threat, especially from that Ignite and having his uh, Ignite and ult available. Garen has so much um, burst on him that um, I guess Aatrox just realized maybe maybe I don't want to mess with this guy right now. Absolutely. And that, look, Silas isn't even... Okay, no, he's going back to his camp. So I was about to say, he's looking for even more damage onto Narihate because that's the only place where there's a little bit of weakness on Ego Nog and it's not even that weak. Mm-hmm. I think if Nerhate, he's he's honestly, he's like, I'm a long-range mage. I'm okay to just clear my wave and then just go sit by tower, wait for the next wave. Oh, but right now he's actually getting a Quirky and his face knocks him away, though. No pressure, no big deal. I mean, he is having so much pressure put on him this game. Um, but uh, thankfully, he's, he's only died once, it. which is... He just Yeah, he just keeps on hitting these knockaways. Gets the Silas kills randomly. <laughs> I mean, now Dira's here to punish Professor Hex. Goes for the flash. Hex does not have to flash himself. So it's kind of unfortunate, but that definitely relieves a lot on Narihate, who now gets the access to this wave for free. Very much. And now we're seeing Valka potentially looking to overtrade. Looking like they're fighting it out. There could be some angles here, but there's fights all over this map right now. <laughs> As there has been for the entirety of the nine minutes mm -hmm. of this game. Well, regardless, I think the teams are going to take a bit of a breather now. Uh, teleport back mid, just farming bot lane. Top lane always going to be trading, but no one's really going to be dying, certainly, especially for the junglers not being there. But Silas kind of has to find something to do, because just taking camps is not what Emrys wants to do to get back into this game. I mean, it looks like what's going to have to happen. But you have to imagine the, the wheels are turning to figure out where can I get that kill that I need to accelerate this game. Absolutely. And I mean, from the side of Ego Naga, they are very happy to be sitting in the spate where the, the gold is honestly relatively even. They're actually up 500 gold. This team in these 5v5 team fights are able to absolutely apply so much damage. And now we're seeing some action mid lane. Yeah, it looks like uh, Emery's is able to get in and get one, maybe two. Narate does not have flash anymore. And that Silas should have E up very soon. It's not quite oh no yeah he's absolutely going for it and gets a double kill uh that's pretty big again the silence wasn't working out before but suddenly uh two kills uh that's what, kind of what you need to get back in the game especially with that dark seal <laughs> that is absolutely massive it looks like it was a potential dive um from the side of Egonog on that flashless corky 
Um, but then, unfortunately for them, um, Emery's just happened to be in the area, and he was just in the perfect spot to pick up that double kill and get four Dark Seal stacks under his belt. So he is now looking like he's in a pretty decent spot now. Well, Dragon is spawning, and you just used a lot. Now, Silas ult isn't that long of a cooldown. Of course, Corky ult doesn't have a cooldown. But Adir does have his cooldown. And uh, that's the major one you want to look out for, right? Does Amumu have ult? Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, bot lane trying to set up a really aggressive freeze is RTMS. It looks like he's not going to be that punished for it, so... I'm um, going to use that to probably gain some bot lane tempo to look for that dragon. Right now, Emery's is in the minimap. Meanwhile, top lane! I was trying to ignore him because it's top lane trades, but Valka has to flash. Valka having to flash out is very unfortunate, but on the bright side, Egonog is in a very good spot with this Drake as all four members are surrounding and starting to hit. But it looks like now Narahate is heading back up to catch the wave. There could be an angle Wait, for Inalia. Wait, just be dead? And this would be doubly bad? No, Fury's not going to be able to get it completely. But Fury does have teleport, so at any time, he can give up the pressure on that and go for Dragon. It looks like he's going to continue to pressure top lane. And they're just going to take a 4v4 down here. Now, uh, Dira does get it, and Kane Bid does not escape the wrath of RTMS. And it looks like a lot of people are going to be following. Emery's gets another one as well. They lose two people, now three people Ooh. for that dragon but they barely get the quirky as well i mean a really awkward trade and i think top lane fizzled out with just a plate for aatrox but uh quite the trade however this does mean second dragon for egonog they are close and closer to that soul point as we are trying to i'm trying to see now what that soul ends up being and it ends up being chemtech which is probably one of my least favorite souls i think it's one of the least impactful but i think it's still a soul is a soul at the end of the day. I mean, honestly, well, Emery's just trying to collect some grubs, which would be really nice for this Aatrox pressure, because Aatrox pressure is most of the pressure that Legionnaires has right now, and is kind of really holding on to. And giving four grubs over to that Aatrox would be so impactful. And to this Garen, who's just not been able to been in the be in the game like the rest of Ego Nog has. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, as we're seeing now that Valka is down about 20 CS, as well as the kill, that is so, so much gold over on the side of this Aatrox. Oh, but Fury's kind of engaged here, and I think Silas is finding a movement. Now Fury's just walking away, it's gonna be a 2v2, but Deer's here first, the teleport comes in as well, but Valka's really low! Just oh. goes down before even be able to use ultimate, the teleport also gets cancelled by uh, Valka's, I believe. So now, it's just two kills for Fury, and the one shining light that Legionnaires had for their team, uh, they've got an extreme advantage now. Hey man, that light is getting brighter and brighter for sure. I just think Deer is trying to make these plays and unfortunately, Enelie is Hexen right on the shoulder. about that cancel going in and actually gets the damage off before Nihate can get the old damage off and will get that solo kill. They had a standoff there with their ultimates, but unfortunately the rockets beat lasers. Um, and this time- the that you have. Mm-hmm. As we're seeing a lot of gold discrepancy, especially in these solo lanes for the side of NLE. Um, with the only real bright side for Egonog right now being Ruffian, sitting at those four kills um, and being up his first item over the gen. Um, but it's really up to Ruffian and Artemis to kind of finish it or lead this team to victory right now. Because as I mentioned before, but these solo lanes have... are not in a good spot. But they do have the tools to do it. You know, yes, the gold lead is very heavily in favor of Legionnaire's top side. But this dragon pit is what it's going to be all about for at least the next two dragons. Maybe there's a chance Ruffin can get a really strong ult off. And even a really fed Silas will die in an MF ult in an instant. If he's not careful. Mm -hmm. Speaking of which, Dira looking for a Q does not quite hit it. But Artemis has a really good flank position. Doesn't quite hit anything. Though, and now he's getting Braum ulted. Nico ult also knocks up him and Deer. Deer doesn't even want to commit right now. Doesn't use the ult already. And Ruffian has no chance to ultimate. It's probably just going to fall without being able to use it. The teleport behind is good. Fury comes in to close out even more. And now even the bot lane is feeling the pain of Legionnaire's advantage. Unfortunately, it's a disaster for Egonog as they bring in this very monstrous Aatrox who comes in. And while we have Narahate and Valka farming up top, I don't know if they're going to be able to get enough value off of what just happened down bot. Luckily for them, it's not the dragon yet, but with it at 90 seconds out, I mean, it's hard to recover from that and get into a position where you can contest the dragon, especially since Dira's ultimate will not be up, and without the Amumu ult, MF ult loses a lot of value. Mm -hmm. For sure. 
And I mean, props to this Silas, right? He started off this game 0-3, and now we see a 7-3 and monster over on the side oh, of Valka Italy. is dying for this tower, does not care. We'll get the objective bounty, probably worth it, but now Narahante is also under pressure. And there's no top laner coming to get you, I can tell you that much. Dira oh. cannot protect his mid laner. Valka also goes down. Valka dying for the tower is probably worth it. Your mid laner dying as well becomes a problem. Because now everything on the map is the ability Legionnaires can claim. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, that rocket was just able to tag him there. And in Ali's prize is Shelly herself, right? They're going to be able to open this up. They have so many options with it. Most likely looking at breaking open that top tower to remove all of their outers. But we're seeing a good amount of tower trades on the side of Ego as well. As we see that bot tower fall. Now it looks like Fury wants to commit for this top tower with... Emrys. It's kind of awkward because this does leave open the dragon, but I don't think Ego Nog's gonna try to overload the bot side of the map. They want to overload the top side of the map, and meanwhile, Deer's chunked to half because, yeah, he wants to be here to protect this tower. Uh, but Corky has said something about it. Wait, Corky's taking tower shots? It doesn't even matter. There's no damage coming out, and this tower absolutely will fall, and there's no chance for Ego Nog to even go to claim that dragon. Mm-hmm. <laughs> As all as four members here of NLE are absolutely charging in at 16 minutes onto this, honestly, this beginning Nexus turret. Um, and I was honestly surprised that Ego didn't look for a potential in on that. They were a man down, and they kind of need to be looking for something right now. Yeah, I think they were just a little bit short on the play. They probably assumed that it wasn't quite as many members up there, and then Deer got chunked out at half. And if a move was chunked out to half, there's no sad mummy. If there's no sad mummy, Ruffian can't easily get a good ultimate and that's kind of their only game plan right now mm -hmm. absolutely as now we're seeing do mm -hmm. potentially we're seeing the members of ego nog now grouping as five and while Back this can tower again for fun teleports coming in emery's gonna look for something any ultimate here would be good but he just accepts routing them that should be using the teleport for the dragon which is fine i mean you save mid tower so mm -hmm. You do also get the benefit of having complete control over this Chemtech Drake, and it is going to be the prize for NLE, as Egonog is unfortunately having to retreat over to their base and trying to trying to get the items they have with the little amount of gold they have right now. Now, Misfortune almost has the second item, which is good, but so does Jin at this point, and, you know, the only lead you had was Ruffian over Bongo, and if you look at the other head-to-head -head matchups, it is not pretty. Mm-hmm. And that gold lead on the side of the Misfortune. Oh, Emery's is getting onto Dira, takes the Amumu, all uses it for himself. And Emery should be able to get out here. There's so many tools. Ruffian going for the ultimate, cancels it though. And they can't even kill Emery's despite his crazy commitment onto Dira. I think that is such an unfortunate cancel. I think obviously that must have been a mistake. But I think even if you had one more tick of the bullet, of the bullet time there, I think there was a chance that they were going to get a oh, massive no, shutdown. Hate. It's fine. Okay. The quirky poke looks scary, but again, they can't really commit under the tower. Artemis, though, in a really awkward spot, does have a lot of defensive tools, and Silas is mostly about burst, so he'll be okay for now. But these towers do not have the same luxury. Mm -hmm. Silas is able to use his combo there, but thankfully, uh, big shield man Mr. Braum is able to tank it. But um, if he wasn't in as good of a spot on the map... Oh. Nico, you didn't count the minions, but it's still Nico support, so... Bongo doesn't want to commit the ultimate, and uh, it's just uh, saying, ha ha, got you! <laughs> Watch mm -hmm. out for that next time! Yeah. But it doesn't actually turn into anything. I actually Sorry, think that barrier, ends up... Sorry. Yeah, it ends up being the barrier, but I think that ends up being pretty good on the side of Ego Nog. Having your Nico, um, who honestly is the only one who doesn't have kills, that ultimate is really only going to be used for that knockup, right? So if it's only being used on one target, it's not a lot of value. And that's not what you're wanting from just a Nico support. So if she is going to continue to use those just one-man ulties, looking for those cheese, uh, uh-oh, I'm four casters, um, it, it might end up being okay for Ego. But if we see those big ulties be coming out, I think they are in trouble. Yeah, a lot has to go right for Ego Nog, and that's one step. But, you know, you can't just be like, well, now Nico ults down so we can fight, because I don't think that's the case either. Mm -hmm. So a lot of things have to go in their favor. A few more Nikols like that might be good enough, but I don't know. It's looking really rough. Mm -hmm. 
I think at, at this point, you realistically have to be looking for the side laners to be overextended on the side lanes. I think that is your best bet, looking to potentially three-man, four-man collapse on them, try to get these cheeky kills, because four members of an elite well, do have shutdowns. Well, speaking of cheeky, Emery's is just taking the Baron right now. Silas has enough sustain. However, the red tree, or the blue trinket, sorry, did see it, so they're trying to figure out how to commit, when to commit, but Valk is on a ward. And right now, Nico is here, not quite able to find an ultimate, but you... Oh, they just flash over the wall, they just want the Baron! Now the MF ult is pretty good, burst out a lot of people, there's a Falcon's ult too! So they get the Baron, but Deer is in great position to prevent people from escaping! However, they just killed him! Now, Bongo is able to walk away because the burst is already down, you already used the MF and Valka's ult. So, they only got one, they're actually gonna just lose more, I think. Now, Artemis is able to walk away because, again, he has that defensive shield. So it's a one-for-one -one trade, except it's just a tiny little Baron that went the side of Legionnaires. And that was absolutely so close for Ego Nog, right? Dira made it into the pit, but unfortunately wasn't able to win that 50-50 smite fight. Um, and we honestly were able to see some of the benefits from Ego Nog's comp. I think uh, Narahate is just dead here, by the way. Mm. Flashes out, there's not that much mobility, but bullets move pretty fast. A flash isn't gonna save you that time, right? There's just too much damage and too much pressure coming in from the side of NLE there. Um, and unfortunately, it's not going to be anything in return from, a return from the side of Ego Nog. Right, and there's still four Barons, four Legionnaires, so they can split them up pretty well. However, Hex is kind of caught here. Braum can get the stun. There's no W. The flash for a flash trade. And now Hex has no cooldowns, and Valka is directly on him. This is exactly where you want your Garen. And you Back want 14. the shutdown to go there, too. He was in absolute no man's land there, and that is the only real way that Ego Nog had a chance to get back in, getting these shutdowns on these carries. And while they had to burn the flash on Valka, he is able to come out with 550 gold in his pocket, and he's probably feeling a little happy about himself. Yeah, two flashes for one is something you'll take if it gives you that much gold whenever you're this much of a deficit. And because they grabbed the first two dragons, they can kind of afford to wave goodbye to this one. Uh, now, some teams like to get feisty. Artemis looking for some vision that maybe he shouldn't be, but he knows when to back out. So they will accept that that dragon is absolutely not theirs. Get the wave in mid. Let Valka farm up some. I mean, they are accepting this, right? Artemis really wants some vision. <laughs> And I mean, while you were talking about earlier, the one benefit of Ego not getting those dragons early is they're able to potentially stall out this game, right? On the side of Italy, they only have one dragon. They have such a long time for them to potentially be looking for that soul. So if this game potentially goes late, that gold lead ends up not mattering as much as the team, as these teams end up finishing their items. So that could be an angle here for the side of Ego. All right, Artemis finally gets the vision that he wants. He's confident that they're on the dragon. And that does mean that they pressure mid, which gets out a TP. And that will be getting out Professor Hex's TP for just some pressure mid and the dragon. They are absolutely not letting that mid inner drop. It is honestly, or mid outer in. But that is one of the most important towers. It opens up so much opportunity for the enemy team to go in and get some extra vision when that tower is gone. And that really needs to be the primary focus for Ego Nog to open up this game. Um, but Italy probably knows that. And that is why they are they're willing to that TP to defend that tower. But this does mean that we kind of have a lack of objectives for a while right now. It is kind of hard to um, see a siege being that successful here either, unless they can get a really nice dive off. And, you know, Amumu and Brom are really good at deflecting those as well. So the next three minutes might be the most quietest three minutes we've had all game. And while it might be the, the quietest three minutes, it is honestly one of the opportunities for NLE to kind of close out this game, right? You see that NLE has set up so much vision in Ego's bot side vision, or bot side oh, jungle. But it's Kane that's caught out potentially. Nope, boss plant too good. It's not that time, thankfully. But this is the opportunity for now NLE. Oh, oh counter vision. The Emery's is in the flank. Artemis has a lot of defensive tools. Not enough to deal with all of this damage. And Artemis will go down. That is one tool to protect from dives gone. So a lot of towers are going to be under pressure now. Mm -hmm. And with that pushed in wave mid lane, NLE has a great opportunity here. And we see... Dodge, good. But not dodging that. And the general is just going to be too much. You can't knock away Jin from 10 miles away. And Bongo will collect that one. Now it's 5v3 on the map. And they are looking at that inhibitor. I mean, even going so as bold to just use the grubs to try to take it. Uh, but they'll probably just wait for the wave for now. Uh, Artemis will be up soon. So it's unclear how much more than the tower they can get, but this tower is absolutely gone, and perhaps the inhibitor too. And while one might one bright side might be the fact that Emery's used his seekers in that interaction when he probably didn't need it, 
Um, I think there is an opportunity oh, to go in here. Oh, here. I'm on the other side, and MF cannot get an ult off if she's dead. But she is getting one right now with a wall right in front of her. But it's not on anyone. Bongo, however, gets a Garen in his face. That will absolutely kill him. Kane has to flash away. Hex has no opportunity to. But this Fury, Aatrox, is unstoppable. I don't think Valko wants to face check into that. So right now, yes, they do defend. And they only lose their inhibitor. They get some kills back. But wow, that was close. And while that was a super stylish engage there from Silas, right? He was able to flash a Mumu ult and get three. I think he was only able to kill one, and then Ruffian was able to trade back on him. And we now see that only Fury on Aatrox has the shutdown. And the gold is honestly, even though it's 10k up, they have a lot of gold in their pocket still. Right, and again, the next objective is this Baron at one minute. Baron's a lot- you saw how close that first Baron was. With the Vel'Koz ult and the MF ult overlaying on top, multiple people were low, one went down. With the gold this much closer, it might be harder to make that kind of call. Mm -hmm. I think you absolutely should not let Ego have the opportunity to flip it. I think you need to look for a pick. You are strong enough to find someone, take them out, and then look to take the Baron with that man advantage. Um, I think if it is a 5v5 flip, there is the opportunity for Ego Nog or an Elite to... Or Ego Nog could step up and Inali could just not be, have the fight of their lives, right? And there's the opportunity for Ego Nog to come back if they were able to take this Baron. Well, right now they have to deal with this mid wave because, again, that inhibitor is down. One of the easier inhibitors to deal with, but right now they have to face check through so many dark spaces on this Baron, which is already being burned down. But it's Jen, <laughs> so it's not the fastest, and they get the blue trinket which is a cheat, uh, cheat for getting out of that dark vision area. Looks like they are going to go for a flip. It's in the pit, and Mephil's good, and they actually get the steal. steal, and they get two kills. Right now, Ego Nog is absolutely back in this game. Emery's is trying to crawl and claw it back, but he's just going to die. We see and three members. Like... Yeah, just oh my... three dead, four Zira, and they get the Baron. And again, they are also up uh, two dragons to two dragons. This gold lead was the only thing Legionnaires had along with structure damage. And the gold lead is about to change dramatically. I mean, we were just talking about it, right? That was worse. That is worst case scenario for NLE, right? They chose to flip the Baron. And unfortunately, they don't have enough of fast of a take with the Jin as their main damage dealer and the Corky. So Dira was able to sneak in. And we now see the Emerald Jungler, who is a support player right now, outsmite the Masters player. I think it's fantastic. Mm -hmm. And the MF ult is pretty damn good whenever they're all grouped up in a pit. It felt like there was only one space where Legionnaires could ever group up like that, and they went for it because they wanted the game to be over. And now, the game is definitely not over. We now have ourselves a spicy one, Scarlet. We are, oh my goodness, oh my goodness. We are seeing so... We're going to see a lot, hopefully. Hopefully they're able to take this Baron and yeah. take this momentum to the finish line. And Artemis, luckily, is able to get so much vision now. Unlike last time, and Kane is actually the one face checking into him. Has to Zanya's, yes. Artemis now has to get out himself. Actually decides to go back in to try to kill Kane. And will get a support for support. Absolutely phasers. Ego Nog. Meanwhile, Dira is in the middle of a lot of people. No ultimate though. Dira, you don't have ult yet. Will go down. However, they could still see them winning the fight, but they're just so low. And MF ult is not going to work out whenever your front line is that low, so they will lose the third dragon. But again, gold exchanging hands is still positive for them. And while it ended up being a one-for-one -one exchange, what wasn't seen is the Garen was able to take the turret in front of Aatrox's face down bot. And outer, the inner turrets are a lot of gold on the side. So we're really seeing that gold leap close as it was 10k. And now we're just sitting at about 3.5, which is a massive swing. And again, this inhibitor is respawning soon. Uh, Garen now can absolutely match the Aatrox. Like you said, he was not only matching him, but getting a tower. Um, and they still have to wait five minutes for the soul. And what now needs to be said is this misfortune is absolutely giant right now. We are seeing this misfortune. I'm looking at it. She has a 4k gold lead individually alone on this gin. Um, if this misfortune is able to get these bullet times off, if she's able to be protected by these Brahms, these are going to be massive fights. And I really think she's going to be able to t potentially carry this game. Oh, but Silas just immediately takes the ultimate to make sure to get this tower down. That's another tower down, a bit of a gold advantage gained again for Legionnaires for the first time in a while. And they're going straight for the inhibitor as well, but I don't even know if they win this 4v4. Fury does have teleport over Valkra, it must be said, but I don't know if uh, that's really an option either. <laughs> and at any time, they could also swoop up and try to pick up Fury as well. Looks like they're just trying to see protect the 4v4 siege. Mm-hmm. 
they're playing it out here, but I mean, honestly, the, the wave clear from the Vel cause of misfortune is not something to sneeze at. I think there is the opportunity here for them to hold this, but... That is a Curse of the Side Mummy on Emery's again, which is a massive ultimate that, yes, only gets half as much as Zira does, but right now it's going to be used on Valka, not even having to use the ultimate, but Valka gets the ult off on to Fury, so he will go down the Curse of the Side Mummy, a little awkward, because there's no follow-up, so Emery's also goes down, and they don't even get the butt in him during all of this time. Now that was Q onto Bongo max range. Now Bongo is able to flash this, yeah, but good. not able to flash that. And there's another stun coming out. There's so many members of Legionnaires falling right now. And I think it's just going to lead to a huge gold uh, buyback for Ego Nog. Because now they have the entire map to themselves. And that is just absolutely how these fights need to go for Ego Nog to get back into this game, right? Valka is able to squeeze out that kill on the Aatrox, and while Misfortune is able to get a clutch flash to avoid the Silas' damage, this is absolutely massive. And while their base might not be in the best spot, I just think there is there is hope here for this team. There's definitely momentum. Right now, if you're Legionnaires, you are not thinking, we are definitely going to win this game. You were wondering, how is it ending up like this? And for Ego Nog, you have every incentive to try to make this game work. Yes, you are out of playoffs, but it would be quite the story to come back and win this game. I always like to say, but how funny would it be if we won? And right now, exactly. I'm really hoping Ego Nog wants to laugh right now because it would be very funny if right now they might be out of playoffs, but they come out oh, swinging. Oh. Raptor gets to live. So fun. Raptor lives. Raptor lives matter, I guess. <laughs> they make it this time, but. Regardless, next objective is the Baron. Soul is spawning in a minute after that. Are they going to go to the Baron pit again? When the first time it worked out okay, second time was an absolute disaster for Legionnaires. Maybe they just played for Soul this time, but I don't know. It didn't deter them the first time. I will say, if I am a member of NLE right now, I am telling my team, guys, <laughs> let's get someone before we go for this Baron. I I don't want to risk it. They've shown this this well, jungler. He might be right one now, in nine. Artemis will using the Q to face check, but Narhante is still out of position. No one can protect him, so he's gone. And Baron's up in 40 seconds, and Narhante does have the teleport. So it's not the worst pick in the world. I don't even think they're going to try to use it to siege for an inhibitor, though they're looking for the top lane. Uh, yeah, I guess if you were going to lose someone, the, the Volkaz with teleport is probably the best person to lose. But now they still have to deal with this Dark Vision. Dira is walking into a Corky. Quite a bit of the damage. They get the Brommel, which is not the best ultimate for Silas. You know, obviously goes in. the Moomoo one. Moomoo will use on him, but the MF ult is completely cancelled! And now Flash they cone. have no tools without Raffian! Now Valka is on Hex, Hex should go down to the ult on Bongo! So everyone lives for Legionnaires! Baron is up, but they could just go for the end of the game, and I think that's what they're doing because Professor Hex is recalling. The only reason to recall here would be to teleport to try to get these mini waves in. Now that mini wave is just now meeting the middle of the map, so they are pretty aggressive here. Maybe they just take two inhibs into Baron, into Sold. Now the Corky is teleporting bot lane. So they might be getting a wave there. I don't know. It's a little uncoordinated. They could just go for triple inhib here. It's not Squid the man worst. man is up at least. But it, if they overstay, it will be another big turn. Corky has made it with the menu wave. So I think they're going for triple inhib. Emery's just going in, but he's alone. Narhat, they will go down, however. And Emery's lives, which means they will get triple inhib. And they might go for more because without the Vel'Koz, there's just so little damage other than specifically the MF with no ultimate. It looks Absolutely. like they will back off for the soul. And unfortunately, that hope for Ego Nog looks to have potentially been fading. Unfortunately, Narahate gets caught out, and they do not have the fights that they want, especially in that jungle, as I believe it was either the Aatrox that knocked Ruffian away on that Blast Cone. And it just didn't end yeah, up working out. Yeah, it looked out. like Poppy ult, to be honest. Mm -hmm. Someone Blast planted her, and she was gone. That Chemtech Soul makes it so you go, you basically are going from top side to bot side on these these blast cones. You are flying. Um, but now we also see that Misfortune is full build, so potentially there is the angle for a good ulti. But we also need to be cautious. You see Nico and Silas both have these Zhonyas right now, so that is a very good counter as well to these strong Misfortune ultis, right? But um, I think if he w maybe potentially waits it out, looks for that really keen engage, I think there is still, there's still oh, a little bit of another pick here. Just has the ultimate of Amumu available once he shows, but Artemis is just going to take it and not care. That does mean they're going to start Baron, though. And again, Valkas has to teleport so early. Uh, you do see this clearly now with the blue trigger. Emery finally picks it up. The pink ward is pretty good, too. Can Dira get the steal again? Teleport comes out early. Looks like they might want to turn it because they're stopping damage on Baron right now. 
which I do appreciate <clears throat> because there's so many minions coming in. They stop it. They got the teleport. They got what they wanted, and now they're routing them through the mini wave as well. Because right now they have priority on this mid wave. In fact, that they is... might be looking for bad backs here because the movement ult is available for Silas. Looks like they've got them routed between their base and uh, the jungle. So instead, they'll just take that mini wave and try to get the towers. The movement's behind though. This is the weirdest flank that Deer's found in his life, probably. But this Amumu ult could be massive. Now near he goes oh, just finds Speaking a lot of, of people. Now Hati gets a flash out, which is good. MF ult is pretty good as well to get a shutdown. Bongo is not gonna be able to do damage whenever Deer is on top of him. Fury as well, only hitting a tank right now. It looks like they may have overstepped Deer. Will go down. But I mean there's just so many minions. And they did pick up the front line. I think that Professor Hex and Bongo. Do a lot of damage to these towers, but can they get to the Nexus? The Ruffian just going to be able to try to burst down Aatrox, but Aatrox will not go down. Aatrox now on the Nexus. It should fall before anyone can do anything about it. And the Legionnaires close it out 1-0 in the weirdest game of, I think, the split for Warden. Uh, I lied. There was a weirder game earlier, but I don't know. That game was pretty wild. You know... I mean, like, it was a banger. I mean, it was still a banger at the end of the day. I think it shouldn't have been as close as it ended up being. I will be honest. I think NLE gave Egonog a lot of opportunities to get back into that game. And they were able to get that Baron flip. I do want to shout out the um, good, I guess, the good discipline to not go for that flip and just walk in. We're like, hey, we have three inhibitors right now. We can kind of just walk in and stat check them. And they did. And they were able to get the win here. But that was absolutely insane that's all i can say yeah it was um i really appreciate the determination of egonog to stay in that game i mean they really clawed out a potential for themselves by getting ruffian ahead getting those first two dragons and they played to it to the very end just unfortunately a few missed fights at the end i mean arguably just the next to last fight was the one where they made their biggest mistake other than the early game and it cost them but they stayed in it for the entire time for sure Mm -hmm. absolutely and i mean if you're think if you're thinking nla you're thinking we got out of that game we now know hey we gotta be we gotta be a little cautious but also on the side of ego nog while while we didn't have some good kdas from some of the players i think ruffian still had a very good performance going 12 1 and 5 on that misfortune she was able to apply so so much damage um so i think there is still potential hope um, if we can also have these the solo laners be able to hold hold their own, potentially look to maybe even just go even, I think there is the opportunity for Egonog to compete in the rest of the series. Oh, absolutely. I mean, again, the deficits and the solo lanes were so close. We were singing Narhate's praise for dealing with the pressure for a long time. It just suddenly it crumbled a little bit whenever the mid lane and top lane got a little bit too much pressure, but uh, there were definitely times where Valka was looking like he was getting back in the game. There were definitely times where Narhante was looking very ahead almost. And if those lanes go slightly better, that's a very different game. Absolutely. Um, and I think, honestly, one thing we can learn from this, guys, is uh, Baron flips are really scary, and it doesn't really matter the rank. It's going to be like, do you have the faster hands on the, I guess, on the moment? And we saw, honestly, two flips. One went the side of NLE, one went the side of Egonog. So... I think that is going to be something that both teams are really cautious about for the rest of the series. And I think it's a lot of things that people should be looking out for as well. Don't flip yeah, you your barons, guys. You can't ego a support main anymore. They got smites too. Mm -hmm. Ego, no, hey, they're the kings. Ego Nog is the king of ego, right? But, uh, but still, right. not this time. Well, um, I don't believe that the teams have decided sides yet, but we will get that information to you as soon as possible because Ego Nog does have side selection. It looks like Egonog is actually taking red side, um, which I believe they had last time. Yep, so draft will be interesting because I'm not sure if Legionnaires wants to blind pick Jen again, although they could. And I really think they want to change the Silas, even though, you know, I mean, there are definitely some pop-off moments there. But uh, there are probably some other junglers that could have fit that team comp better. Mm -hmm. I completely agree. I think the Silas um, potentially was something that maybe Emery's was wanting to mess around with. Um, but looking at just the rest of the comp, I think it having to go jungle is understandable. And he was able to end up getting a lot of value out of it. It was a bit of going 0-3, but and then he ended up flipping it around and getting seven kills in a row. That's a massive killing spree, and I think he is honestly one of the reasons they were able to get such a massive lead early in that game. Yeah, and it's um, definitely a question. Like, if they pick Silas again, do you think Emrys is going to take it? Or does Egonog have to worry about it being mid lane as well? 
so they can't potentially take that Aesol or Vel'Koz and uh, hope to dodge that matchup. I mean, it's definitely a pick that has some upsides. Just We were definitely seeing the downsides too, and I'm a little bit worried that that's not as consistent. But maybe maybe Emery's can pull off that a second game in a row. Mm -hmm. One thing I think could be an option for Egonog is while they picked the Misfortune very early in that draft, looking back at last draft, NLE banned tech in technicality five mid laner. Right? They banned Aurora, <laughs> Zeri, Ezreal, Yasuo, Aesol. There could be the opportunity here for Narahate to get put on a pick early, maybe R3, and then you ban out some of those counters to also give Ruffian the opportunity to get a really nasty counter pick, because I think he kind of is the light for this team right now. And I think a counter pick could be what they need to take this game home. Absolutely. Although, to be fair, uh, Egonog might just want to pre draft a press R team again, because... They play the lanes a little bit tighter. The team fights looked really nice from them. Now, part of that was Emery's maybe going a little bit too ham, and maybe he wouldn't do that if he wasn't 7 3. I think Still. Emery's, yeah. I think the team fights were a very, very nice bright spot for the side of Egonog for sure. Um, but I do think if they had a little bit more gold in their pocket, those fights, even like the fights were looking good a lot of the time when they had the positioning. You saw the the Velkaz are or Velkaz are come in from the side of the Baron Pit and the Misfortune are they're absolutely pincered right and it ended up they get a lot of value out of the the comp but it also just depends on not falling behind to these really skirmish heavy comps coming out from NLE and we're gonna have to see if that happens again but I think a press R comp really could work you know and I get a very funny message from Velka asking if I was watching that game surprise Velka oh, I'm actually you? casting it but I, I you know I thought I was watching the game. But anywho. <laughs> uh, anyway. I wonder if anywho. Valka wants to know your thoughts. I guess he could just check the VOD. <laughs> he can check the VOD. He can hear all the flame I threw at him for sure. But <laughs> um, And also, you know, that's another point. Like, Valka, I don't remember. He counterpicked. Yeah, he got to counterpick the uh, Garen. And uh, I don't think they want to go for that matchup again. Although a lot of that was Emery's jungle pressure. Um, still, maybe they want to figure out something more consistent than putting the Aatrox versus Garen matchup. Yeah. But anywho, anywho. Um, we will see now. I think it honestly, like, I liked the draft from both sides. I think it honestly is just going to come down to, like, who has the hand, who has the hands, who's going to be ready to see, but... Uh, we'll have to, we'll have to see, right? We'll have to see what ends up happening. I could expect similar drafts from both sides, so... Yeah, it's kind of hard to say because with such a close game, both teams get to learn so much about what happened in the game. Like, you know, uh, laning uh, was, well, you know, sometimes it is whenever you lose horribly, you get to learn about laning phase and that's it because team fights don't really happen. This time, they both saw how team fights were really good for Ego Nog, so maybe you don't give them that many options. And then laning phase was pretty good for Legionnaire, so maybe you take away some of those options and both teams get to adapt from it, despite Legionnaires being the one that won. Mm -hmm. Like, I think, honestly, the name of the game for Egonog is to, honestly, as much as the jungler likes to get involved, the 2v2s and the 3v3s are really what killed Egonog that game, right? We see that Dero is able to come in for the gank, but Silas is just sitting right behind him going, hey, man, and then abs blowing up both the laner and Dira. So I think, honestly, if you can get to the point where you're just fighting over objectives as a 5v5 team, that is going to be the way to go. All right, so we're going to get into draft bans are the same so far for Legionnaires, but I don't know. I think there's some potential options, and Ego Nog already switching something up with them um, by baiting me, and it's actually just going to be straight to Anivia ban again. We see the Anivia ban, and we see the bunny girl come out. Unfortunately, she's gone. We don't get to see a lot of fun action here, but, oh, an interesting change. Valka so heard that you were cast and was like, no, nah, don't put me against Aatrox again. Give me a matchup I can thrive in. Please ban that. Mm -hmm. And so Aatrox will be gone. Aatrox has just so much value as just being one of the best, like, impactful blind top laners where he is able to do, still do so, so much damage. But then at the end of the day, he's just like, like, he just gets away with a lot. And while there are counter picks into it, I think it is for the aggressive top laner, the go to blind pick. Now, Seraphine is an interesting blind pick. I mean, I don't think I've seen it in a long time unless Seraphine's been just completely broken because she uh, lets a lot of information about your draft loose, you know? Uh, you're taking I... Seraphine, 
Uh, I mean, obviously bot lane, she has a little bit less ability to be countered, but still, it's a very interesting blind pick. I think while it's an interesting blind pick, I've been seeing it a good amount, especially in the Crusader and Sentinel leagues. I think it is just, I think it is a very solid support. Like I mentioned, that R is just absolutely game breaking. And I think there are actually a good amount of AD carries that can work with it. Whether you want to potentially go with that more early game brawler style with the Lucian or go more with the hyperscaler, right, with the Jinx. I think it opens up so much opportunity as well as it also like it isn't too, too hard of a champ. So it also might give their it might give Kane the opportunity to continue to shot call a little bit easier in these fights. OK, so now this is a completely different draft from Egonog. They've got utility. I mean, Amumu and an Ivern, I guess, are kind of similar in that they're not trying to do damage. They're trying to do CC, but Ash instead of MF, yes, they both press R. That's their main role. It's a lot less damage, though. And it's kind of interesting to see Ash paired with the Enchanter support. So I'm kind of curious, what are they picking mid? What are they picking top lane to, deal, to make this Ivern make sense? But that's a and king. I will say, <laughs> from Dira, this was his most, this was his absolute favorite jungler, right? This is the, this is the champ that... He gained the LP with this is his this is his bread and butter. So he is uh, wait, 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 wait. Maybe we need to talk about something else right now because we've got Seraphine, Alistair, King Lawson. <laughs> like, yes, dear Ivern's interesting, but what the heck's going on in Legionnaire's side? You know, I was gonna think it was a Seraphine support, but with that Alistar locked in, unless they're going with something absolutely crazy in these solo lanes, um, I think we have that bot locked in. As now we see Ash Braum potentially come out from the side of Ego Knock, which really does a good job of shutting down that Seraphine. It's kind of interesting because the bot lane is so different than before. Yes, Jin was already that utility pick and Seraphine and Asher utility picks as well. But it's just a completely different look from Ruffian. And it's a different look on the pressure that's going to be on the map. Because the 2v2 is just completely different. Mm hmm Absolutely agree. And I think with Ruffian, the side of... I'm honestly surprised they choose to go with this more utility-styled AD carry. Um, I think, honestly, Ruffian did such a good job on Misfortune to just able to apply so much damage. Um, but now we're seeing more of this utility, and we don't see a whole lot of damage on the side of Ego Nog yet. I'm hoping to see it from the mid and top lane. I think Legionnaire's gonna ban Yasuo here, right? Because, I mean, it's just kind of what I get a feeling of for Ego Nog with them having this kind of interesting... I don't know. Uh, they have to pick some kind of hypercarry in the mid and top lane. Um, obviously, they're gonna try to hide it as long as possible, but they are exposing both of them to bans. Uh... This does mean that they get this ban what they want to not face against. So I guess you can kind of look for information in their bans and Camille ban and it kind of tells you that their top laner, Cassante as well, doesn't want to be bullied, which is respectable. I mean, I definitely would ban Camille and Cassante a lot more if I was a top lane main. Those champions are kind of annoying to lane against. They're absolutely but What are bonkers. they saving for mid lane? I mean, yeah, but they're, like I said earlier, they're leaving these uh, mid lane picks open. Maybe... Maybe both players are kind of wanting to ego it out, play their fun champs, right? Like, I know the Oswo is something that we mentioned, and it, it honestly could potentially work with the Ivern here or the Braum. Um, but now we're hovering over those mid lanes as they're choosing to give Valka a counterpick here. Yeah, it'd be really interesting to see a hyper carry taken mid lane blind. So I don't think they're going to do that. Hoi would be interesting. I mean, I can't imagine them picking Oswo blind here. It's a little okay, I suppose, with how the bot lane is going. Quay makes a lot more sense, though. I think Quay is just such a such a stable um, mid laner that in a lot of matchups he doesn't have a whole whole lot of hard matchups. Um, and while he might not have the favorable matchups, I think he's just able to provide so much utility for his team, um, especially when you have the protection from the Ivern from the Bra. Um, but we're gonna have to see really what the the that mid lane and top lane is from the side of NLE to really see if Hoy's gonna have absolutely the best amount of value. But we're seeing Zareth come out, and that is one of those great matchups for Hoy. This is looking like a great ARAM team comp <laughs> <laughs> for Summoner's Rift, though. I I have not seen these four champions before together ever. I think, and I'm wondering what ties it together. What's the fifth pick? What's the top lane that really makes this work? Mm -hmm. And we're seeing Mr. Yeah, Gator come I, I guess. out. I like it in general for the lane, especially blind pick. But wow, what a group of five champions. Um, I guess maybe I'm not adjusted to the new meta, but I probably would make I... a lot of sense here, except for into Renekton's kind of tough. Renekton is a pretty stable blind pick, and we see Mr. Doctor himself. The MD is in town as Mundo is the R5 pick. I know that this is one of Valka's favorite picks, 
Um, and I think if he's able to get through the pretty rough early landing phase, I think he's going to be able to get some get some damage done to these towers and to the enemy team. But I've seen Mundo be countered by Renekton. Taking it in this instance is kind of interesting. Now, it is true that Ivern is probably going to put a lot of eggs into the Mundo basket. So I don't see him going bot lane that often. I mean, I guess you're into Seraphine Alistair. I don't know. These drafts are so interesting compared to the first one. Like, you're just... It feels like we're watching two different teams. Absolutely. Like, there is... There isn't a whole lot of similarity between last draft... Or, I guess, game one draft and this game two draft, right? Um, I think there is the opportunity for Egonog. They are playing now more a pretty heavy disengage comp. Um, sitting with the Braum, the Ivern. You have Huey and Ashley's longer rage um, carries, as well as a wild card that is Mundo, who's kind of just going to be doing his own thing on sideline, but he's going to be doing it well. And, and also, just sitting on NLE side, you also have that long range with Seraphine and Zareth, but um, you have a little bit of brawl with that that came or Necton and uh, Big Bull Man Alistar going to be able to get in there. So I think it really could go either way with these drafts. I mean, I haven't seen that many team fights at this high a level, but I am still just concerned at, like, you know, my solo queue brain is asking... Who's going to kill Alistar and Renekton, and how is it going to get done? I mean, Hoi does a lot of damage, don't get me wrong. But you pick Ivern, Ash, Braum, Mundo. I'm just really concerned about these team fights. Mm -hmm. I do agree with that for sure. Um, I think Hoi is going to have to absolutely go a tank buster build um, if he's going to be able to break through these uh, teams. Like you see the potential, like the Leandries, the Blackfire Torch, just like burn, burn, burn. Because it's going to take a while to get through the Gator and the Bull. Um, but I do think there is potential tank bust as well from Mundo. I think he's going to be able to do a good amount of damage, but I don't know. I do agree that is going to be hard to get breakthrough, especially also with Seraphine shields as well. Like, it's going to be tough. Yeah, I, uh, I'm not sure. Uh, because, again, like, well, the thing is, is that it's such a solo queue comp from Legionnaires almost as well. I mean, I'm not saying that these champions can't work in competitive. Seraphine certainly has seen a lot of time there, Alistair as well. But Kane, Zareth, Renekton um, is definitely interesting to see how that will translate into the later parts of the game. Uh, for sure, for sure. Um, but I don't know. I think while it is a, a decent change, I think we saw like Narahate play the Velkaz. He's probably used to playing these artillery mages when he plays mid. Um, and I think it's just going to be... Honestly, I would expect it to be farm sim, but looking at how game, game one went, um, I think there is the chance that we see a little bit of action early, especially uh, top lane. I think they're going to try to shut down that Mundo, uh, make sure he isn't able to get to that late game monster state. Um, and I think while you have Renekton, one of those really strong early lane picks, um, I think Kane can get involved. I think a lot of the time he's not your strongest <laughs> early jungler, though. So we'll have to see. Yeah, it's kind of funny. I have to repeat the question, but on the opposite side, if you give Egonog the first two dragons and then Mundo gets to level 16, who's killing him? Yeah, <laughs> I mean, really like... Anyone on Legionnaires, that's for sure. Is the damage in the room with us right now? Maybe maybe the Zareth. I, I think your your only real option, though, to kill this this Mundo is maybe Kane. I think Kane, Kane and Renekton, if he's, like, somehow 10-0. But that depends. It really does depend, I think, on how this top lane matchup goes to see how this game is going to turn out. Yeah, there is definitely a lot of questions about this draft. You know, last draft felt really distinguished and well-refined. You know, everything makes sense. This draft just leaves a lot of questions, which is kind of interesting because you usually see that as the opposite. You know, game one into game two. Where game two, there's a lot of adaptations towards things that work together towards things that didn't work in game one. Whereas this time, I think they're both teams kind of diverged into just something completely different. I guess both uh -huh. teams were just not happy how game one went in some way. I mean, I think that that can be seen for both sides, right? Like NLE was probably expecting to stop, to potentially stomp this team. That is kind of honestly kind of that ragtag group of misfits, right? Ragtag group of friends who are coming together, um, finish out this year strong, finish out this season strong. Um, and honestly, Egonog kept them on their toes that first game. So I think maybe they're drafting more comfort as well um, to potentially close out this game. I think the Kane is a bit of a wow factor. You don't see it a lot in competitive. So maybe that could be something that they are looking to play around, have something that Egonog might not be expecting. Um, but overall, the rest of that draft for NLE is very safe. And I just, I kind of just see this game going the distance, to be honest. Well, that would be exciting, and it's kind of interesting to see if Iwanog can grab some dragons for themselves again. Because the more dragons they get, the more Mundo has the potential to become that unkillable. 
um, which is like even more so into Seraphine Carey, mm -hmm. Kane Jungle, Zeref Mid, Renekton Top. I mean, if this Mundo gets level 16, he will not die again. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's just that simple. It will be Mundo's world, and the rest of us will just be living in it. Um, exactly. I'm, ho I'm hoping to see Mr. Money Man himself. I'm sure Valka's going to use the skin. Um, is Money Man well, going to take over this game? Who's to say? Well, we will have to find out after a quick break. The players have locked in their champions. We are just in that small delay, and after that, we will be into game two. Welcome to game two of NLE Legionnaires versus Igor Nautic, where Legionnaires were able to close out game one, but they made it look close. And now we've got 
just uh, someone else is drafted for the teams, I guess, because these are completely different comps. You know, I think one for both teams. I think I either just just coach came in or something, and he said, "All right, guys, we're changing up both sides, both coaches." <laughs> but now we see, just absolutely, they're kind of feeling each other out. No, no cheeky uh, like um, top lane invades. Uh, Valka's probably smiling uh, ear to ear. He's like, "I'm not dying." Is this early. a visual bug? Can someone else tell me that the items are correct for Professor Hex? I am also seeing th the support item for Professor Hex as well. Huh. I guess if you're just like, you know what? We can't pressure him. I'm not going to play Quirky. I'm going to play Zeras, and I'm going to take zero CS. I'm going to roam all the time. I don't know. What's the rationale here? Uh, is this something that's happened in other places that I haven't been paying attention to? What is happening? Because right now, Kane and Professor X are about to get ridiculously reduced money. I have not seen this before, to be honest. Even as a mid laner, I have not seen someone take this, this support item. Um, I'm wondering if there is potential benefit. Maybe they're trying to funnel potentially some gold onto the Kane. is my only guess for why they would be doing that item. Um, but we're going to have to see, I guess. It's very surprising. I swear, Riot like saw the idea of double support item, and they just stomped it in the ground. Said it was not at all ever happening again, ever ever. They blow up your PC if they see it. So I'm very surprised to see it here, where the game with stakes. Meanwhile, trade Fury gets level two first, but Valka is still hanging out. Honestly, ends up being a not bad trade on the side of Valka, especially being a level down. Right, he's able to get the grass proc, not taking too too much damage, and Mundo's okay to just kind of hang out for a little bit, right? Absolutely. Meanwhile, Ivern's getting the flares clear done, and uh, I'm just gonna every once in a while. Oh wait, actually top lane. Okay, yeah. Every once in a while, check. Yep, Professor Hacks has this thing called the minion roll. It says this unit will receive reduced gold from lane minions. Let's click on Kane. Support minion roll. This unit will receive reduced gold from lane minions, which includes ones that you execute, I believe. So, in. No, Maybe. he does not. Okay, they changed that. They changed that. King just got plus 15 gold, despite having the support menu roll. So he's fine, I guess. But Professor Hex is uh, 10 CS to 20 CS. And Fury, meanwhile, trading topside, talking about this weird thing in the mid lane. And oh, okay, so he has sold the support item and has gone for the Doran's Ring with the teleport back. Kind of gave up some lane tempo there. And is definitely down gold. I'm going to have to check the gold itself rather than just doing it by feel and CS because that's wild. I mean, looking at it now, it's it ended up being about a 200 gold lead over to Narahate. And I mean, I'm guessing with the fact that he burned TP um, and sold the item, it must have been a mistake. Um, potentially, maybe that was just the item. And I'm just surprised no one was able to catch it before he walked out of base. Potentially, right. he... Now... Wait, here's actually kind of low here. I know Valka doesn't have that much burst on Mundo, but he does have Flash, not Ghost. Actually, Fury going in, getting the stun out, but the... I, I think he's just dead. Oh. First blood goes to Valka. That might be, honestly, worst case scenario for how this top lane matchup could go, right? Mundo is not supposed to be able to get these early kills and get these this early lead, right? And now we see a Mundo who, honestly, gets a little bit of a shortcut. He, um, oh my gosh, what's it called? Has taken the golden ticket maybe to late game here. As it gets accelerated a little bit. Okay, Narhate may be playing a little bit aggressively because of that support item mix up, but the items aren't that far apart. You guys both have Doran's Ring, both have Minions. Griff's Axe, that's a flash, flash in to get the kill. And now Emrys is in a little bit of trouble, but he is Kane. But Narhate able to get this damage out. And the fear! Mm -hmm. Emrys is trying to run away. That's a Ivern you're running away from. Even the increased range. And the Q has to flash. And uh, the solo lanes are the complete opposite of what they were last game. Absolutely, uh, and that is a great well? start. No, I think it's going to end here. The minions are going to hit Ruffian for a little bit more, but that trade will end. And while Professor Hex did have the level advantage and was trying to trade with Huey, Huey has so much um, susceptive damage with his, um, I believe it's his WE, where he's able to get those three empowered autos, as well as he had the minions backing him up there. And with Dira coming in, Mr. Tree Man saying, hey, what's up? They were able to get that kill, and now Narahate is in a absolutely fantastic spot. I mean, he kind of mind-controlled his opponent to give up the first few waves of gold. Mm -hmm. uh, meanwhile, Kane getting a nice engage from Ruffian. Those minions are still following, too. But Zerbi misses everything, so they can kind of chase it down with a stun. Kane flashes, still gets stunned. They're still going to go for one last auto attack. Now, they did the, kind of lose the wave, but the wave actually bounced off kind of nicely. So Ruffian gets a really good trade-off there. 
and Ruffian gets a really good trade. They get the Alistar Flash. Also looking at the wave state bot lane, um, both Ruffian and Artemis have it in a really good spot close to their tower, and it's going to be kind of hard for the Seraphine, who's pretty chunked, to be able to break that, as well as with an Alistar who kind of isn't going to be able to do too, too much yet as they're zoning him off right now. Yeah, the teleport will come out for Mongo, so it's not the, the absolute worst, but it's not what you want to see whenever you pick Seraphine. Mm-hmm. Indeed. And while Seraphine will still have value even late late game, like she's picked as a support, obviously. She doesn't need gold to be a champion. I still think you don't want to be just giving away free experience here. Right. And Kane unfortunately lost a little bit of gold as well from the support item miss up. I don't think it matters too much. If you look at the support, yeah, the support gold's basically exactly even, so that was irrelevant, but I don't know. It just feels awkward all around. Oh, and we're seeing a mid lane exchange here. We see yeah, both the Zerg ult come out. No, it all good. It's like it ended up being just ultimates traded out, but kind of close. Mm -hmm. Thankfully, Huey was able to dodge a couple of these Zerath um, ultimates there, and it was able to. He was able to use his ultimate, that final portrait, uh, to stop the cane from doing a ton, a ton of damage to him. I mean, now actually, there's a ward on these Raptors with a very, very low cane. I don't know if anything cheeky could happen, but maybe Huey throws a QW on I mean, the cheekiest thing face. happening right now is that Ivern's taking Grubs, and Ivern level 5 taking Grubs is a very sad sight, but if you see Kane on the opposite side of the map with two health, you can do whatever you want. I mean, that's true, but you got Money Man coming over to help out, right? Money true. Man's always there. <laughs> you can tell Deer was not killing those <laughs> for a long time. Mindo mm -hmm. finally comes, because Valka's got so much tempo. From just uh, how Fury mismanaged the first uh, few waves of the game. Mm -hmm. and absolutely. Like, Ego Nog is in. They're up 1k at 7 minutes here. And this is absolutely where they want to be. Um, and it's just looking fantastic. We see both the solo laners having so much pressure. The Kane is here for the lane gank. Lug hits level 6 off of that immediately, but the arrow comes out. Chasing after Vongo is not going to get you anywhere because you can't go under the tower. Emrys, however, almost stunned up. Is not able to use the ultimate yet. Still has it available. Taking a lot of damage, though. And it looks like all they get for the lane gank is a flash from Ash, and uh, I don't know that it really saves Bongo that much pressure. I do think you're also able. I think he was able to get the ignite out from Brom. So I mean, obviously he has a lot of kill threat with that ignite. But thankfully, um, Ikonog is able to get out of that, and they just they kind of call it. They call it even. They shake hands at this point in the game. Right. Right now, all oh, Narahate is taking a lot of damage. He gets a, one more skill shot. He's in trouble, but there's no school shots off cooldown. Bongo has to take these minions while taking down these arrows. Feels really bad for him. I mean, all three lanes are just in crisis right now, and Emrys is not able to pick up any of the lanes, let alone save all three. Absolutely there. Let me see. Yeah. I mean, like I said, if the game keeps going this way, Egonog does have a very, very good chance. As we also see, potentially, the first Drake hasn't been taken yet, but... Oh, looking mid now. Narhati somehow really low. And the it gets the skill shots through the Ivern on his face. Deer does not stop him. Now he's going to go for the ultimate with the Daisy on his face. Well, not, oh, those minions. No, those minions. minions does get it. And suddenly mid lane is saved not by Emery's, but by the enemy team giving you two kills. Top lane, however, I don't think Valka's is going to be as generous. The fight looks a little close. That Fury is getting pretty high on Fury. Doesn't want to go for it yet. He might just die. And he will die. The Empowered W does not work well on Mundo whenever he's got passive up. Botlane also in trouble. So, yes, Professor Hex was gifted some gold. But the rest of the lanes are still in crisis. Like I said, that is absolutely not what you want to be seeing from the mid lane. But the bright spot. The bright spot of Ego Nog is himself. He's sitting with a lot of gold in his pocket. And he's he's thinking he's a problem. Sitting up almost a thousand, 1k on this Renekton. And if I'm the Gator at this point and I'm O2, I'm sitting here like, oh. But we'll have to see. Yeah, and Narhata, yes, did give over two kills. Still getting another plate. Still getting quite a bit of a CS lead, although it's dwindled by now. Um, so, you know, he's still going to be part of the game. And bot lane again. Uh, Ruffian's in a great spot. Mm -hmm. So the first, the closer this Mundo gets to level 16, the more Ego Nog has got to be feeling comfortable and not, does not have to go for these aggressive plays. But right now... Narhati's just dying in lane. He's just getting he's just getting hit by the skill shot, right? Zareth is just able to apply so much damage and just burst there. And unfortunately, I just think Narahate wasn't expecting that amount of damage from the first strike Zareth. I mean, and right now, if you're Legion Heirs, your target is Narhate and this dragon, of course. But right now you see your gold source and you're gonna target it pretty heavily. 
because Huey does not have the option to easily play safe whenever there's a cane involved. Although then again, it was Emery's aggression last game that arguably caused some issues of its own. But that does mean they get the first dragon. And it does mean that they can maybe use the mid pressure to help stabilize these other two lanes. That is true. And while we're sitting here, we were talking about that early aggression from uh, from Aramis. And while he's gotten involved and gotten a couple of souls for himself. Oh, never mind. Maybe he's getting involved right Emery's, now. Both junglers are in the area. Looks like top lane is going to be the fight we're going to focus on for now because it looks like they backed off Fury. However, is just caught in the wrong place again. Is able to EE off. Valka doesn't care about the tower. The R button's coming out. Is Valka actually going to gift over the gold? Not quite. Now, Artemis looking for some kind of Q for damage. And I don't know. It just can't really catch anyone. But Fury is flashing into his own death. I think wait, maybe. No, no. He Unfortunately, into his own Unfortunately death. for Fury, he's not able to get that damage there as it looked like the Mundo lived with one HP there. And unfortunately, this gold lead is continuing to build exponentially here in the top lane. Yeah, and Kane might be looking for a flash over here, but Emrys is just have to flash away because he's almost dead. Mm -hmm. Oh, he's very, going back very... in for the minion wave. There's so many skill shots on this way. He's going to switch over to this. And there. That's, that's everything. Narahate, chill. <laughs> that is Narahate crazy to was... go for. He was not expecting Mr. Cow to be there, I'm, I'm assuming. <laughs> But that was absolutely right. an insane flash from the side of Narahate. And he's trying to get himself involved. And unfortunately... You know what? I get so... it. <laughs> you lose lane like that whenever the rest of your team's doing good. You're like, come on. I can see how the scoreboard, too. He, uh, he wants to day... get involved, I guess. But he's got to be... <laughs> he's got to be cautious, man. He, he wants to... He needs to let Money Man do himself and let the rest of his team get involved, right? Oh, but oh my goodness. Regardless. We are now seeing... I mean, he gets a mini wave in. He loses one plate for it. It's fine to go for a flashy play sometimes, but uh, definitely not counting the missing people on the map. Very true. And while there is a 1k gold lead just because of the amount of kills that this Xerath has accumulated. Even work? I... This 3v1 might work, but then again, do you even have the CC? You got the slow, but now Spell Immune comes out. Alistair going to come in for another stun, and then he just walks away. There's no cane ult. Money Girl man doesn't care, but oh why? no! But it might not even matter. The flash means that Bongo is under tower. It doesn't even matter. You can miss arrow. You can get charmed. You can get the flash. Bongo is still gonna go down there whenever it's two v one. And that and was even all with... for Alistair to be top lane for no objectives and no kill. I mean, if you're supports right now, you're sitting here like, unfortunately, the Alistar isn't able to get that play done top lane, but Artemis is able to help pick up that dive on oh, Seraphine there. Day. In trouble again, half health. Oh, we can't even no. dodge these ultimates, and there's a cow coming. He will go down. No assist for the cow, unfortunately. But it's not like Alistair had anything else to do, so he might as well pick up that XP. I guess on the bright side, yeah. I mean, it's it does suck that the cow didn't get a get another <laughs> assist, right? He's only taking one right now. But <laughs> I don't know. This air is getting a lot of kills. Um, we gotta be very cautious on him. Yeah, but it's interesting to see five kills in a row, I believe. Oh, when was he die? When did he die? And he's only got the 200 gold shutdown because of the gold lead of Ego Nog right now. What if what if that only 200 gold lead shutdown is due to the fact that he got reduced gold because of the support item? Yeah, I mean, potentially. Bongo's in trouble again. <laughs> nice flash from Ruffian getting out of the CZ. I don't even know if it was oh, technically my. necessary, but they absolutely get another kill. And Ruffian will step up, even if Narahate wants to make it a little bit more difficult for the team. It might not have been necessary, but it looked it looked really cool, at least. Um, and I think it they played it well. They get a little bit uh, from it bought. But unfortunately, or maybe fortunately if you're an NLE fan, which I am right now, uh, they get Rift Herald. Right, but they get Rift Herald, but they have no ability to ever contest this dragon. Mundo has teleport over Fury. And uh, Ash is really big. Gastar Hate has uh, not that much damage. Emery he's going to have enough damage here because Emery's in a lot of trouble. I think he still takes damage from that. Will not. Oh, no, he did. And it looks like he's trying to escape, but I think. Yeah. Okay. Well, I don't know if you have to give it to the bomb, but Nar Hate's in a lot of trouble himself. Shield is good. Barrier is good. Deer is going to make sure that he is protected. Kane doesn't have many options to get out, and top lane is pretty pushed in, so at any time, Mundo could come. Flash is on the Xerath, though. This is a huge shutdown. It's not even a shutdown because how far behind they are. Actually gets the kill on the way. He will be stunned. Gets the 150 shutdown. Oh, no. Just before he does the knock on a tower, <laughs> actually. Double kill. Might even get another for his team with the ultimate. However, 
The Money Man man's is here. here. Gets one. He's gonna get another. You have to imagine with the stun. Now he can ignore the tower. I think Zareth's gonna go between multiple towers. So at least Zareth will be safe. But that is a seven kill Zareth with only a 200 gold shutdown because of how much the rest of the map is a complete disaster for Legionnaires. You want to talk about another potential disaster here? We were talking about the only potential players that are going to be able to kill this Mundo is potentially a red cane. I'm not seeing any red on that cane's portrait anymore, Scarlet. Ooh, uh, yeah, Zareth has kind of told a lot of items. Like, Leandris, yeah, you got that going for you, but uh, there's no Giant Slayer for AP. I, I guess Leandris is the Giant Slayer, but man. And I mean, you're sitting here, this Zareth is absolutely massive, right? And they are building tank shred with the Leandris, but I just think there is absolutely, this Mundo is still absolutely monstrous right now. It is going to be so hard to contest this guy on side lane, especially with Renekton, well, who Murphy honestly is in just- in a really good position here. I don't think King can ever knock him up. And the more that Ash can get some arrows off, the more damage is just unavoidable. Mundo's already here, by the way. Doesn't even want to teleport here, wants to be here. Get the dragon, then teleport back top lane because he doesn't even care how much fury gets off those waves. So this dragon is kind of hard. However, they do have to deal with the Zara poke. Like I said, I mean, I wouldn't want any more poke if I'm a seven seven one Zara, right? That's the best person to be poking down. But it looks like they're gonna take it and take this Drake. It is a 7-1 Zareth with a 150 shutdown. Meanwhile, the arrow does find him if Pex dies here. It's just absolutely no way they can get back into this game. Who's going to get it? Ruffian will get 450 gold, which is so massive. That is absolutely, absolutely the pick you want. And now we see Money Man starting to run him down. I'm going to throw my briefcases. Oh. Okay. Emrys is here. I don't think Emrys is damaged though. Mundo has ult in about two seconds. Smite comes oh, out. No. Get that hard steel stack. Oh, wait. Actually, just with the CC, maybe it's enough. It <sighs> will eventually go down. It does go to uh, Kane as well, which means you have another potential threat on your team rather than just all of your gold being on the Zera. Uh, mm -hmm. But if the only way you can pick them is whenever there's nothing else on the map and you send three people, I don't think he's going to mind too much. Absolutely. And I mean, we were talking about these two titans on both sides, right? Both the Zareth and the Mundo. And we see both of them drop within 30 seconds. This game kind of just blew wide open, to be completely honest. Right. I think Ruffian might look for something here. Doesn't have arrow, but it does have a red buff. Is a little wary of the cane, however, because that cane just got a huge payday. I don't think he's spent yet, though. Cane, the support cane, is taking the tower. Does not care <laughs> about the damage. Mm -hmm. Get it done. Get it done early. Fair enough. Meanwhile, Fury's kind of overcommitted here. Yes, Mundo isn't here. The rest of the team still has an insane amount of chase. Look at the CC available right now. Even if they couldn't kill him, which they absolutely will, they could just stall until Mundo gets here. Unfortunately, it looks oh, like not here. the Braum was flash. the one who took away that kill. Um, it Maybe it was potentially the Aftershock, even though he doesn't have Aftershock, he's Guardian. So I'm guessing maybe it was a shield. But still, um, it sucks that the kill didn't go over to Ruffian's side, but... Even on the side, we see Narahata having to flash out there. Regardless, I mean, it's basically down to this Kane and Zareth. I mean, Seraphine will do Seraphine thing regardless. Yes, she won't do as much damage. I mean, she probably picks up Leandri soon just to help with that Mundo. But those two are basically all the damage that you're going to see coming out of Legionnaires for quite a while. Mm -hmm. And I will say, honestly, an unsung hero of this game is Ruffian, right? We were talking about how well he performed in game mm -hmm. one on this misfortune. We are now seeing Ruffian here sitting at 301, honestly, with a very solid guild lead of almost 2k, 2k up on the Seraphine here. He could be in a potential spot where he's going to be able to just absolutely slow people down, not oh, let them get on. We've seen this before, but this time it's only uh -oh. two people and there's an Ivern on the way. And Fury gets caught up with the Blast Plant. He's got nowhere to go. Yes, he will die slow because, again, these champions don't really do damage. Zarethold actually trying to protect him, but who are you targeting? is the only one that could possibly die, but the Root comes out on Emrys. So even Emrys can't find anything. Fury is playing like he's full of health. He's got very, very little health. This is right next to Baron Pit, by the way, so if they lose this fight, it's over. Seraphine ult is gonna stun but there's no damage there's just no damage watch the Zareth not able to get anything arrow finds the Alistair Bongo running for his life as Alistair falls the stun will come out very soon the cane can only slow Hex throws out a parting shot as he runs away they could potentially Baron although their Baron damage is pretty low and Zareth is still alive I think they're considering it right now I don't think I would do it with Yura that low and Zareth is still alive but you could still make them think about it 
the stun does find Artemis. Artemis is not exactly the target you want to poke, but you'll poke anyone at this point. Hex looking like he's caught, though. Has Stopping to flash out. You're still running away from Mundo. You have to dodge every Q and get to some kind of tower that's just not there. He will go down. Narahate gets that. Now the Baron is much freer without that magic damage, especially since Emery's is also caught. Kane has a lot of tools to get out. Does dodge the Q, but, I mean, he's just dead, right? Ma oh, my. What great kiting. In. Now they're too low to go for the Baron. I think they're still going to take, um, I believe, five kills at the end of the day. Five kills at the end of the day with absolutely no kills dropping on your side. I mean, that's honestly a great team fight just from the side of Ego Nog, right? They're sitting here. Valka was the original person that got caught out. And honestly, you're playing against a Warmog's Mundo, right? He is going to absolutely... Uh, he's going right back to f***y. And because the Mundo wasn't able to die, he was able to continuously get back into these fights as a full HP absolute monster. And he was able to just give his carries enough space to absolutely let their damage fly. Right, and Narahate is becoming an issue now. Like, yes, he could have more damage if he perhaps had more power in lane, but he's still away. He's got so much utility, and he still does quite a bit of damage to the people that are CC'd for 10 years. Mm -hmm. This dragon, I however, is kind of hard to even defend his Legionnaires. So they're doing okay right now. I will say Legionnaires positioning for this dragon is absolutely great. I think it is going to be super, super hard for Egonog to get in, and I think they're honestly contest and are honestly looking for the position to get vision around this baron which i think might be the play for them right it would be nice to have an ocean dragon against zareth but baron usually pretty high value and they're just starting it and zareth has no time to get over here he could press r sure that's not going to kill anyone even with the baron removal of mr finds a ruffian maybe it will kill him if he can't dodge everything no, not even close. They get the Ocean Dragon, but Egonog will take the opposite side of that, get the Baron, and they are more than happy with that trade. I think that's a fantastic trade for the side of Egonog, right? And while it's only been three Drakes taken, it's been both those sides, no soul in sight right now. Um, and I think right now, Egonog is in a very good position to win this game. I mean, Valka is level 14. If, again, if he lives level e. 16, I'm not expecting that death number to change. It's only died once. In a 1v3, where the rest of the map was kind of barren, you know? <laughs> Literally in a 1v3 for 10 years. I'm not sure how that ever happens again, especially once he gets level 16. He's level 15 now! Mm-hmm. I think, like I said, I mean, the only real option here for Legionnaires is to play around Professor Hex. He does have so much damage. He is, he is still very far ahead um, in his build, but this way is also going to be able, able to apply a lot of poke themselves. So I think it's just... In this position, it's just very, very tough for the side of NLE. And you still have to play around Ash Arrow, Braum catching you, Ivern catching you, and this Mundo that you have to match. Oh, and what's the pain? Narmonte, however, is a lot easier to match. Now, the fear is really good. The ult's really good. Has to flash out. But if you don't let Kane get onto you, he can't ult. So it looks like Emery's will have to run away quite low on health. Now, this... Playing for monsters is interesting. I don't think it's enough, though. Ruffian! Ruffian's oh, just low! The ult comes out, but there's a Brock shield protecting everything. Fury finally comes in. Emery's gets the shutdown. If you don't have Mundo, you're not going to win the fight. That and is... once again, the team fight happens while the solo lanes are farming on the side. However, Mundo's getting a lot more this time than he did in game one. Narhante is getting this tower, which is 700 gold, and Mundo got the inhibitor tower. Now Narhante will die for this. But at the end of the day, there's no objectives up. You might as well dive with your team. It's only an extra 300 gold while you got 700 gold for that tower. I mean, that was an absolutely a massive engage there from the Alistar. And while we were talking about potentially it might not be enough, the fact that the Mun there, they're fighting under the tower. Even though they had the Baron buff, it's not going to be enough. Uh, getting a three-man knockup, also when um, Artemis was not able to get his shield up in time to block all of the Seraphine ulti, it just ended up being a disaster team fight there on the side of Eagle Nog. But this but. is a Valka flank. I think these two supportive back line characters are in a lot of trouble. Oh, he will Sarah. 1v3 you. Professor Hex has no ability to get out. Flashes up now. It's I think he's to clear. There's TCC. Artemis right, gets another one. Um, which is great. But that I think Valka that could Sarah be tilted. Gone for now. The arrow misses. Uh, but they have so many uh, options to get towers now. They actually just get on to Mongo. I think he's dead. Alistair trying to protect for as long as he can. Now they're just trying to cut their losses. Bongo's gone. There's no waves, luckily, so they have to meet Ash if they want any structures. Unless Valko just wants to tank this tower. They're pinging it like he wants to. I don't, I don't think that's the ideal whenever you've got no damage here. Artemis isn't exactly going to kill this tower. They're going to do it, though. 
Artemis mm -hmm. hitting the tower for about two damage. Dalka for a little bit more. Wow, this is that's five thousand needles something... right now, as they are absolutely wailing on it. But it's not doing too much. But they got the they got like, the Ryan damage. They got the tankiness to deal with. Wait, Emery's finds Ruffy, and I think Ruffy's in a lot of trouble here. Has no sums. Will kite out as much as possible. But I mean, Zerathol is just insult to injury. He's gone. And yeah, you messed around. You got the mid tower, but you got your bot lane killed. I mean, honestly, on the from the side, I don't think Ruffian should have been that far extended, especially without all of his supportive carries, right? But also, one thing that I want to note is, if I am a solo laner or even a jo or an AD carry here, I'm wondering why my support has the is tied for the most amount of kills on my team. But who's to say really if that is to happen? We've had some, we've had mm -hmm. some interesting things, but um, we'll see. I mean, Artemis you know, has the... been picking up these kills. Yeah, and the warm mods support fell out of style a little bit with the nerfs. It doesn't matter if you get five kills, you can afford as much as you want. You'll get mm -hmm. the health. It's totally fine. Now this Nerfed. dragon, again, spawning in one minute. You can give up an ocean dragon as Ego Nog. You don't want to give up Soul Point, obviously, but one ocean dragon whenever you're playing Zara Seraphine can be kinda of hard to give up, or especially with the Zara. Mm -hmm. It does look like they have really good position on it again though. This is really early, of course. But right now, the waves are purely in the pressure of Legionnaires. I agree. And while these these waves are in a good spot, Legionnaires has done a great job of blocking Egonog from entering into these fights, especially with the fact that Mr. Money Man Mundo is not here. You honestly, from the side of Egonog, you have to have Valka in these fights. We saw the absolute yeah, think... night and day difference between when he was there and when he was not there. And I think it's time to bring him, because yes, you can technically give up their dragon, but it's a little dangerous. Meanwhile, the arrow's going to be good. It just goes on Alistair for now. But the knockup is also good. On the other side of the fight, Zareth is finding some other people. Has to walk away. Emery's, however, playing Kane. Kane can always get out. That's still some ults traded before <laughs> this dragon. And while you're on the side Nine of Egonog Kane. here, you so still have the Renekton. He's going to be trying to pressure this tower. You have the main advantage. You need to rush this dragon. You are wasting time letting this Renekton hit tower here. There's no teleport from Mundo, so even after they take this dragon, it's gonna be hard to answer this connection. They could just do the what? <laughs> Emery's from over the wall gets onto Soul Point. They will lose Professor Hex for this. They might lose even Baron for it because of losing that Zerath, but they have to get through this Renekton right now. This Renekton oh, is still King just Lord hammering Hot. on these topside towers, but the side of Egan, of Egan Earth, all, they are running down mid here. I mean, they're just kind of chasing a cow right now. If they don't catch him, it's not really worth it because this mini wave will get eviscerated by Seraphine. Emery's as well doing his job to clear the wave. And now they've got nothing and they've got a way matching Fury. That's not going to work. Wait, maybe it will. The Fury is good enough. Kane, meanwhile, uh, is on top of the enemy team. Tower falling a little bit, but you've got no wave now. And Fury is on top of Narhate. That E will fall away. And I don't see how Huey gets out of this. And now you're down an inhibitor, and Renekton is threatening to take a Nexus Tower. You cannot let him take a Nexus Tower! You can't trade it for this inhibitor, but they're going to try. Alistair Are they looking for a base race here? Aftermath of this. I mean, Mundo will teleport. He should be able to finish it. And I think they get Bongo here as well, but I don't know that they get the inhibitor. Because Emrys is a little strong. Xerathold comes oh, out. No. It's going to find Dira. Dodge everything? Can't go. That's not how Brahmi <laughs> works. He will go down. Artemis also in trouble. Gets smited. Will... Flat, I mean, even Flash, you're still running away from a cane! Will go down as well. This is right before Baron. You lost your top inhib. You lost your entire team! You had complete control of the game. You just... I mean, given the last few minutes, they lost a dragon to a smite steal. They mm -hmm. lost top inhib. And then they lost their entire team. I just think it was just an unserious... Um, or I guess an unfortunate series of events there. It just... The things did not go the way that Egonog wanted. They lost that Drake, they lost the tower, and unfortunately Narahate wasn't able to defend against the big croc. And they weren't even able to get an inhibitor mid lane as a consolation prize. That is absolutely not what you want to see if you're playing on Egonog's side. And even though they still have this gold lead, I think they we might be looking at potentially a, a flip damage of what happened in game one. Narahate dodges the E, so it's okay. If he got hit by that, he was dead. Oh, Even and here comes a Kane. He might be good anyways, Kane's here. The fear is good, but there's so many blue members swarming. Narhate has no ability to get out. Use the ult to try to get some damage off. They're a little scared of the fog of war. <laughs> she just got shut down. I guess I was wrong. Hawaii damage is pretty serious, even if the leaning phase did not go his way. Never mind. I guess he just he got he got weight. I guess that is crazy. I didn't expect him to die there. Oh, arrow, arrow is good on Renekton. Lands on the Gator. Cow, however, saves the Zerath. 
Falco just has to kind of walk away, but he can definitely do that. He pops hold a little early. They're still chasing, though. They want to go for this chase. There's no renekting pressure this time. Seraphine ult is pretty good. They're teleporting in. They really want to end the game off of this. Cow is going to get stunned. He does not have ultimate. Will go down here. Zareth has to just watch this happen from the back. Believe that this should be an inhibitor, and they might go for more. Again, those minions are in the base. Hex does have teleport, but Zareth's not exactly the most... Backdoor of champions, and right now this is looking like lethal damage to the base. Fury is here, Narhate has to be careful. The ultimate's so good, it's gonna find oh somebody who wants to change, just gets three! Yes, Mundo won't die, but he will if he's the only one left alive. Ruffian also gonna go down, but he lives actually. Fury, however, can find him at any time. Arrow is good, so he will live for now, but there's still teleports. Nexus Tower what down. Zareth is teleporting, Zareth doesn't have that much damage towers. But these people can't stop him! What is Ash gonna do? Run in with one health? Zareth is already hitting the tower. I I don't know. I don't think that Ash He's not hitting the tower yet. He's trying to get the wave in. I oh my goodness, the wave. But Mundo's running! Money Man's trying to get there in time! Zareth can't really finish the base that well. Ruffian's gonna be able to get the base no. dead! That's a kill on the Nexus Tower as well. Hex will go down, so it's not completely game over. Cause Valka surely can stop them from killing the Nexus. But this should be potentially another inhibitor, at least the tower. And this is soul spawning as well. And that is absolutely not how you want that play to be going, right? They make the play, they push, they push for the end on the side of Egonog, but unfortunately the cane comes back in. He goes in with a blaze of glory and he absolutely just demolishes so many members of Egonog. Leaving that opportunity for Zareth to TP in and honestly leave open Nexus. This is absolutely terrifying if you're on the side of Egonog right now. Right, this is soul spawning, and you've got no towers on the top and mid lanes, including your nexus. Now, they are going to try to position to fight this. There are no teleports for Fury and Hex, although Fury's teleport will be up relatively soon. So, Valka has to be very careful because, again, Valka matching top lane means that you won't lose the game, but you might lose the fight. As we see the zoning alt there from Narahate... Um, oh. I don't know if anybody was in the vicinity, but maybe he just wanted to do it just in case. Okay, look. <laughs> Hui does that really awkward thing where you have to press R to cancel your other abilities, and sometimes you double press it. <laughs> I guess it's it an was unfortunate a bug of the character. Yes, but now is not the time you want to be double pressing your R, Scarlet. And while it's coming up fast, I think, I uh, hopefully they don't, maybe they didn't know that he used his R there. Probably not. And the ult will be up before anything major happens. Fury does have teleport though. They can't commit to this dragon. They can't not commit to this dragon. Fury right now is just. Do you want to also talk lane. about who about who but has TP? Wave. Is Money Man and that mid lane that mid lane wave is moving in, but Seraphine is going to clear it here. Yeah, it looks like Seraphine is going to clear. Mundo is going to clear again. Mundo teleporting late might be too late. Yes, you can't kill Mundo. Ow. You can kill the rest of the team while he's teleporting in. Fury has not elected to commit to the top wave because they see Mundo. However, Mundo cannot teleport because if he does, then the teleport will come out. Narahate is in a lot of trouble. Ooh. We'll just go down before the redemption. Mundo can't teleport. Seraphine is teleporting, however. Mundo's still not teleporting. Going back to the wave. Finally now. teleports now, but Seraphine also good. I think they're going to lose everyone. Riffian cannot come back from this GA for long. They get the soul as well. I can't see how they could win this fight. And Elise should have everything. Yes, Valka will take 10 years to kill. We will have a short intermission as he won before. <laughs> even Emery's going low has to ultimate. I mean, if this is like, you know, Wait a minute. time. Hex going low. If he gets even Hex here, that would be pretty big. I just Shield's think the Seraph is healing too much. Yep, and that will be shut down to the support. Support carries Unite. The inhibitor did respawn, so it's not completely game over yet. It's really close though. And they got Ocean Soul during all of that. I think they're caught! Can't get in with a massive knockup! Artemis cannot protect the base by himself. Narahate is going to have to be the one to step up. He's actually just teleporting for the base race, but there's no power! They get the inhibitor! They get the base! There's Wait, no, no I don't think it's enough. possible for Narahate. He gets one tower. There's no, no minions though! And the Nexus will fall, and Ali will close it out 2-0 whenever everyone expected this game to go the other way from the beginning of the laning phase. Well. Uh, two amazing games for our inconsequential almost series. I mean, obviously it mattered a lot for NLE and Gosh. they will secure a higher seed for themselves in 
the playoffs and kind of showing why. Um, Because not many teams would come back from that game where, you know, you're losing to a team that um, you thought that you were better than. You come in. They've got this weird comp. They've got Mundo, who hit level 18, by the way, and he did die once after hitting level 16, so I did lie on that. And they just come back and win. I mean, absolute, like, I think it needs to be said. Um, it was said in the chat. It might not have been seen, but as long as he's breathing, he's going to find a way. Emery's with an absolutely clutch defense there. Um, getting a triple kill off of his engage um, on that mid play ended up honestly saving the game. And it ended up being also just like Ego wasn't able to bounce back from it, right? Their wave states were in such a bad spot that they weren't able to feel comfortable um, going for these dragon fights without a potential TP in it from either Professor Hex or Fury. And it just ended up being that they they were getting nervous. They got caught out by Kane on the really nice flank on Alistar um, in that jungle fight. There's just so much denial of vision there. And it just ended up being that uh, NLE said, no more wins for you, boss mans. No more wins for you guys. And Money Man, unfortunately, he comes up today. Um, I mean, it's still. kind of absurd because it was only Soul for that last dragon fight because Emery comes in with a W smite. I don't even know if it was smite steal for the third dragon. It was uh, just W, dragon. I believe. I don't think there was a smite. Um, and you were talking up Vera for that Baron smite earlier, but Emery gets his revenge at the end of the day. That he does. And that Ocean Soul definitely made things a lot easier. Also, Fury making that play is very difficult whenever you're that far behind to say, I am just going to go for the base and hope that they don't answer it properly. Narhante was not the proper answer to the Renekton, even if the Renekton was behind. Absolutely not. I mean, even looking at this post-game gold scrap, like Fury, Fury still had 2k gold up on Huey. And while Huey's able to do a lot of damage in the team fight, isolated, a gator is still a gator. Right? <laughs> exactly. And so, like, if, it, if he's going to be able to get on you, he's still going to be able to slice and dice you to death. He goes, he projectiles on you, goes, Rrr, and then he's just absolutely going to be able to wail on you. And... That really opened up the map and allowed NLE to really get back into that game, just with that opening top lane. Yeah, and this does unfortunately mean that we have to say goodbye to Ego Nog, because while there's one more week of regular season, they unfortunately get a bye, and that will not be enough to get them into playoffs. So unfortunately not. We see him on stream for the split, but what an explosive way to end your split, showing and that you definitely have what it takes to maybe make it back next time because those games were not very uh, they were not one-sided that's for sure they were they were not one-sided they were slobber knockers as i like to say and even though Eganog they didn't take a game today i think they can go they can go away still being impressed right like i said this team they're technically playing in warden this is high this is elite this is where all the gamers play obviously you're playing against these master tier players we're sitting here with our e4 jungler um, he's support main half the time. And I think they they can be proud of how they played today. At the end of the day, it might not be a win, but also, like, hey, you put up a hell of a fight, to be honest. Now, for next week, I think we haven't decided what will be the stream game, but regardless, it's going to affect the standings because we know who the top five are, just not quite the order. And uh, it's going to be some interesting ones because... It's either Emily, who we just saw, versus Seneca, again, near the top of the standings, or Contingent versus Shurikens. Both of those games are going to be really exciting, so whichever one comes back, you guys should definitely come back on the 29th next week for Warden, because that's going to be very explosive and going to determine exactly where everyone stands before playoffs. Hey, I mean, bangers only here in the LXC, right? Only good games. Yeah, and uh, what a great LXC week, it has to be said. Mm -hmm. Thursdays usually ended off explosively. Today was definitely explosive. Uh, I'm so glad that everyone could join us for this. I'm so glad we switched to this game also because it was definitely a fun one to cast. Thank you for joining us, Badger. Uh, thank you, everyone, mm -hmm. for watching. Ooh. And I have exciting news as well. We're going to end almost immediately after I finish the sentence because we're going to be rating the stream that is watching the other match of this, uh, of this, uh, for Warden. So, uh, get ready to tune in to, I believe it is, Raw Street Logic versus Contingent Esports Org. As George Washington once said, good night, everybody. Good night, all. It's going to be a good night. Yeah. And tell Cherry, have a great rest of your stream as well. Mm -hmm. Great George Washington quote. My favorite, I think. You can't say that he didn't say it. <laughs>